there is a palpable bit of nervousness in the studio yeah. today. There are nerves because these picks mean something. On today's part of my take, week 18 preview and picks. The drive to the 405 is coming down to it. We'll break it all down. We'll give you our picks. We'll talk a little bit about Antonio Brown Bucks saga. We have Ryan Rossillo on the show, our good friend Ryan Rossillo. We talk NBA. We talk college football. We talk everything. Great interview. Over an hour long with Ryan Rossillo because he's the best. Uh, and we also have Firefest of the Week. And we are brought to you by our friends at Chevy. You know we are truck guys. Not just any truck guys. Chevy truck guys. And 2021 was a big year for Chevy, Chevy trucks. Silverado made some big news. We're not just talking about the Silverado and the Low Man Award or Coach Prime and all the goodness Dion's bringing. We're talking product news. The Silverado ZR2. Chevy's new flagship off-road truck was introduced in September and in the spring. You'll be able to see it at your Chevy dealer. And what's next for 2022? Well, just a couple of days ago, Chevy revealed the first ever all-electric Silverado built from the ground up on the Ultium battery platform that brings with it new power, new flexibility, and of course, a new range of what's possible in a truck. We've seen the Silverado EV, and it's really cool on the outside and on the inside. It's got all the kinds of new features, just a lot of first for an EV truck. So head over to Chevy.com to learn more and reserve your Silverado EV today. They just announced it. I saw it on Twitter. It looks awesome. So check it out, the Silverado ZR2 and uh, the new Chevy Silverado, all-electric Silverado. So check it out. It's coming soon. Big year for Chevy Silverado. Big year for Chevy Silverado with us. Uh, thank you to Chevy and Go right now and just whisper part of my take. You get $100 off your new electric Chevy Silverado. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Chevy, the all brand new Chevy all electric Silverado is coming out, the ZR2. Check it out. It's going to be awesome. Today is Friday, January 7th, and it is week 18, the first ever week 18, and it's coming down to it. The drive to the 405, which also might be the drive to Dallas-Fort Worth, is coming down to it, and we're going to do our picks and preview. How are we doing, boys? Are we feeling like it might be in Dallas now? Well, so here's the general vibe of the studio. Big Cat's in Chicago right now, but uh, Billy has already taken Big Cat's seat. On the other end of the table here, so he's he's kind of he's breaking in the ass groove for himself later. But Big Cat, there is a palpable bit of nervousness in the studio yeah. today. There are nerves because these picks mean something. Hank said that he changed his picks like four times, and he's never done that before. So people here are deep inside their own heads. So let's recap real quick because it's been a season long competition. So if you miss it at any point, we'll recap it for everyone. The deal is this. Every single week, all six of us have picked four games. A favorite, an underdog, an over, and an under. The rule was that the last place person and the second place person have to drive from New York City to L.A. for the Super Bowl. We are now facing week 18, and everyone is still alive to potentially drive. So the standings are as such. I'm going to do it by points because it's easier this way. PFT and Hank are tied at first. For 40 and a half points. And a push Pushes is half are point, a half a yeah. point. Push is a half point. Jake is in second with 37 points. Uh, myself and Liam, we are tied for third in with 35 and a half points. And Billy is in last with 33.5 points. So everyone, depending on week 18, could potentially, like obviously PFT and Hank can't finish last, but both of them can finish second. I probably can't, I can't finish first, but I could finish last. So everyone... Is or I couldn't finish second, but I could Big finish Cat, last. You got so your Steelers. You got you're half ahead of Liam. Your Monday night Steelers. Oh, okay. So what am I now? So you're four games behind PFT and Hank. So technically, you can still tie for, for for second. Okay. So yeah, there it is. It's chaos. It's chaos with everyone's picks. We had memes. Everyone texted memes uh, separately, so there's no funny business going on because we know that Billy would cheat if he could figure it out. Uh, but. It's it's definitely tense right now because I think facing it, people don't really want to travel uh, all the way across country in a few days 
and maybe go to Dallas too, which makes the drive significantly less fun. I mean, Dallas would be a lot of fun to make the road trip down there, hit up Nashville, maybe stop on Bourbon Street, hit New Orleans on the way. It, yeah, Billy's right. It is sick. Also, fair warning to you, Big Cat. Billy said that he's going. He's in danger of having all four of his picks be correct this week. He feels like oh, okay. he just went four and zero. Also, PFT wow. was trying to get me to spoil. Uh, he came up to me at the office earlier when I came in and was like, "Hey, Hank, I submitted my picks already, so you can tell me what yours are." Yeah, and then nice Hank was try. like, "Hank correctly said that's cap. I was capping." <laughs> nice try. Um, it will be though. It's going to be exciting. Uh huh. It's going to come down to it. We've all submitted our picks. Before we do our picks, should we talk a little bit about AB and the recent news? So Antonio Brown obviously came out today or yesterday and said that uh, he was injured. No, he was hurt, not injured. And Bruce Arians cut him on the sideline because he was hurt and refused to play. No, no, no. He was injured. And then Bruce Arians told him that he was hurt, hurt not injured. Right, right. And then right, Bruce Arians right. cut him. And did the throat slash to him or allegedly on the sidelines. Also, I was I was reading um, some of the screenshots that AB put on Twitter or on his Instagram story this morning, and uh, I don't know how him and Bruce Arians text back and forth. But usually, when I talk to people, they they identify who they are when they're texting me. They're like, "Hey, PFT, mm-hmm. heads up, this is Big Cat. How are you doing?" Like that's that's how normal people interact. And so uh, in this text from Bruce Arians, he was saying. Hey, what's up? It's it's Coach BA. What's up, Hank? Well, wait. Did you are guys you hear that cut out? Hang on, Hank just Something cut just us cut off. Out. Something just cut out. Start. Uh, just start with hey. It's start. Say okay. that sentence over. I don't know what just happened. There's like a. You guys didn't hear that? I heard it. No. No. Okay. What What did you hear? Just so, it sounded like your mic cut out. Like came on and off for one second. So PFT is not mine, right? Yeah, I don't know what it was. Okay. Okay. So Antonio Brown, according to the screenshots that he put on Instagram this morning, on his Instagram stories, he said uh, the, the screenshot was a text from Bruce Arians. And it said, hey, Antonio Brown, what's up? This is B.A. here. Before he proceeded to say, like, how are we feeling? And Antonio Brown was like, I hurt my ankle. I think I'm going to give it a go, coach. I just want to do whatever it takes to be ready for the team. And um, many people are saying that that wasn't a real screenshot from Antonio Brown and Bruce Arians. Antonio Brown doctored it. I just want to say I stand with AB. I don't think that he's done anything in the past that would that would indicate to us that he would make up something like this. So we freed AB. He got released today. The big question is, like, is, anybody, is anyone going to actually sign Antonio Brown? Is that a possibility? The Cowboys. Cowboys? The Cowboys should sign him. The Chiefs? My future. What about the I, Chiefs? I, I, I do have to give Antonio Brown credit. I, I Who knows where the truth is in this one? Um, I, I, I tweeted out earlier, but I, I think there's the truth is probably Antonio Brown and Bruce Arians are both assholes. Like that might be the truth. Uh, because it seems like a lot of people, uh, are taking the side of Antonio Brown because you have to take the side of player safety. Then you have people like Stephen Shea that are bootlickers and essentially saying the Bucks could never do any wrong, uh, and putting out facts that don't prove anything whatsoever. I think the, pro- the, the, the truth somewhere is somewhere in the middle here. Bruce Arians never wanted Antonio Brown on the Bucks. That was Tom Brady's idea. So it's it's not totally unbelievable that Bruce Arians would be like, you're out of here because you won't go back in the game. And also Antonio Brown, let's just say he hasn't been like maybe the model citizen in terms of teammate and dependability uh, on the football field. That's you the know, fake the news fake media card. That, that told yeah. you that big cat. There was but a- isn't it crazy like you have to pick a side here? It's like, no, I think they probably are both just – Kind of jerks. I, th- I think there's a, a very high likelihood that Antonio Brown came back from his ankle injury, played a couple weeks ago against the Panthers, played really well, and over the course of an NFL game, maybe tweaked that ankle again. And so at halftime at the Jets game, they were getting their ass kicked. He was probably pissed off. He wasn't getting the ball much. And he probably said, like, feed me the fucking ball. And right. there, there might have been somebody in the locker room that was like, hey, shut up. And then they get to the sideline and he just quits. I think I think that might be like he's probably not a hundred percent on that ankle. That part I don't think is you can't say like you're not injured because he definitely had a significant ankle injury. Probably Correct. tweaked it again. I thought I thought the funniest uh screenshot that he posted though was in his text with Alex Guerrero, the T B twelve guy. So um, he, he put this online, too. He said, hey, Alex, if we're not going to work anymore, that's fine. Let me know about the 100000 I paid you. Only fair to get back half my money. Let me know how to proceed. First of all, shout out to Alex Guerrero for getting cash from Antonio Brown 
and not just like relying on him to pay the bill after the fact. But then the the reply from Alex Guerrero was very funny because he was like, Antonio Brown is a million percent going to put this reply on social media at some point. And here's right. his, here's his reply. Good morning, AB. I appreciate you reaching out to me. I completely understand that you want to go in a different direction. Thank you for the opportunity to work together. You are a wonderful person. I hope for your continued success on and off the field. Please let me know where you want me to send the balance. Big hugs, my friend. <laughs> there it is. He's like, that's going to be read aloud in court one day. And it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it, the public court of public opinion read it out loud. And they're like, hey, this is actually the, the coolest thing Alex Guerrero has ever done. Yeah, seems like a good guy. And then Antonio Brown also <laughs> tweeted out a screenshot of his uh, his routing information and account uh, at Bank that. of America. He quickly deleted that. But, yeah, shout out A.B., He's he's the yeah. most online wide receiver in the NFL these days, I think. Don't you think if he was he hurt is. though, he would have said something to Danny Boy Hustle Hard? Oh, well, no. Interesting. Be- Danny Boy Hustle Hard told us that he's not going to share all the conversations that they had. That's true. I just but the parts he shared are on the other side. Like the the parts that he did share help the Bucks case and not Antonio Brown's case. So what? why would he do that? So you're saying that Tom Brady, your hero, made a mistake by bringing Antonio Brown in. No, I mean, well, listen. That's he didn't make a you, you got he like he took a chance. It, it didn't work out. They won a ring. Yeah, they yeah. won yeah, a it, ring. It, it so did that's work the out. thing is like you could, yeah, you could say that it absolutely worked out. But I just, I just find it so funny that there are actually people who are like, AB made this entire thing up. Like, no, Bruce Arians, he said he didn't want Antonio Brown on the team, and then Tom Brady was like, no, I want him on the team, and then he was on the team. This is Tom Brady's signing. This is also why Tom Brady was like, he needs to get help, and we're like, we just care about the person because he knows it's his signing. And AB also has not been completely dependable in terms of the the fake Vax card and the fact that he just ran off. Who knows? Like, I'm I'm ruling it. Both might just be a little bit of assholes, and it was going to end poorly either way. What if he goes back to the Steelers for Big Ben's last game? That would be get cool. the band back together. That would be cool. Be very that would cool. be awesome. Also, I, it just wouldn't it, be fair if he went to the Chiefs. I hope he doesn't go to the Chiefs. I don't think he'll go to the Chiefs. I mean, I I don't think he's going anywhere. I really anywhere. only think that, yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. The only reason I said the Cowboys is because Jerry Jones definitely has the stomach for, like, Jerry Jones would see this and be like, I wish I was getting all these headlines, good or bad. Yep. People are talking about the Bucks today. Um, so, I also appreciated Bruce Arians in his press conference because there was a claim that Bruce Arians did a throat slash to AB. And then he he mimicked it in his press conference. He's like, does this look like a throat slash? And he went across his neck and pointed out, like, no, I was telling him to get out, get off the field. And I was like, yeah, but that that is across your neck. But, yeah, I guess that's how how we get a he said, he said thing. Maybe he was loosening up that, that chest device that he wears. If I, was, yeah. if I was Bruce Arians, I would always be, like, around my neck trying to fiddle with the – with the tightness of that weird strap that he has on his chest. It, it, I, I don't know. I don't think Antonio Brown would be back on an NFL team. I guess you could never say never. Maybe ne- – actually, you know, the most likely team he could be back on is probably the Bucks. If Tom Brady just said it to Bruce Arians next year, like, hey, hey, we need Antonio Brown. He's really changed and, this offseason. He's he, made a commitment. Yeah, he runs that organization. I don't think that's unfair to say, and it's not unfair for the Bucks to let Tom Brady run that organization – but this was Tom Brady's decision, and that's why it makes sense that Bruce Arians and Antonio Brown never really got along. Mm-hmm. I also respect Antonio Brown's commitment to playing his song on all of his Instagram stories to try to get that, try to get as much exposure for for uh, the Pit to the Palace. I'm starting to sing along to it. Like that song's been stuck in my head all day. It's pretty heat. He's I hoping it, to it. It is pretty good. Yeah, he's, the pit to he's the hoping palace. it become. He's hoping it becomes a new like everyone uses this for their Instagram story when they're hiking in some mountains. Yeah, from the pit to the palace, song. baby. He's going he's going gremlin mode. Yeah. Um, all right, let's do some picks. Let's do some picks. So are we ready? Does everyone feel good? I feel great. It will be very interesting if we share picks because it will change the the uh, course of Sunday. Uh, Hank. Or Saturday. As always. Or Saturday. Hank, as always, uh, would you like to start with your favorite? <laughs> Hank's eyeing me down right now. I do. Well, it's tough because you're wearing sunglasses, so I can't really get a read on you. I mean, the die has been cast already, Hank. You can't change anything. I know. I'm just, like, trying to get a read. I'm just trying to get, you know, any 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 edge I can get. All you need to know is I'm also going gremlin mode, so fair warning. My first game is Saturday night. Good. <laughs> and 
The Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys minus five is my favorite. Okay. Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. So a little bit better. I don't hate it. It does feel like the Eagles are going to sit a bunch of guys. And it feels like the Cowboys want to win because they don't want to go in on a two-game losing streak in a bad note. Mm-hmm. Primetime what are you Cowboys. Thinking, Hank? I Gardner Minshew, maybe? I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't think I've really shared a lot of what goes into my picks for this. And to be honest with you, I didn't. This is where I'm. This is where I've been second guessing myself, and I've, I've, it's too late. And my picks are submitted. They've been changed. They, they. I went. I did what I usually do: is just go through the board once, write down my picks. I did that last night because I was, you know, I've been thinking about this. Then today, before the show, I was like, "Fuck, let me look, double check these picks." Started second guessing everything. Went on a website that shows you where the public money is on, mm. and the most public money is on the Eagles. So I picked the, the Dallas. I would be worried if Gardner Minshew's playing. I feel like Gardner right. Minshew wins this game because he's playing for his future. Yeah. yeah, and also he just he's awesome. But he might be a pick machine. Right. He might be. He might be a, a pick. He machine. might be a pick machine. Now is this pick one of the? You're saying it wasn't your original favorite, no. right? What was your original favorite? Would you switch from? I think the Cardinals. Because we should also tra- track Hank's like potential picks. <laughs> yeah, his original. Yeah, picks. the original right, picks so just have- to see what you could have done. You have Cowboys. Yeah, this game, I, the Cowboys don't – I mean, they obviously could potentially get as high as the second seed. It would take the Rams and the Bucks to lose. I don't think that's going to happen. So, uh, they also are in a spot where they don't want to get guys injured. I don't know. Weird. It sucks that we have, like, this week 18, and it, there's only a few games that really matter. There's only one game that, like, truly matters, and then the other games are kind of through seeding and stuff. Yeah, and we did find out for for the game that truly does matter, the Sunday night game between the Chargers and the Raiders, the teams are not going to do the kneel downs. They're not going to do that. I, did, they, I didn't think that that confirmed. was going to happen. Uh, but it's not the it's not soccer. You can do that in soccer. That's why they switched up like the last uh, the last round of games for the group stage of the World Cup, where teams have to play at the same time because you can just pass the ball back and forth amongst your fullbacks right. and get away with it. In the NFL, there's there's always going to be like a couple guys that really try. My, yeah, my, I want that touchdown. My, yeah. my original favorite was the Patriots, but I didn't want to do a double loser situation. So, Ah, okay. okay. All right, so Liam, your favorite. Mine is the Patriots. Mine is okay. six and a half, I believe. Yes, mine is six and a half. Are you a little bit worried that the Dolphins. something funny always happens between the Patriots and the Dolphins? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's why I took it. Oh. Because I didn't like it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Because there like always is, process. yeah, there always is something yeah. weird that happens at the end of the season with them. So I don't know. Okay, um, PFT. I got the Rams minus four. Took the Rams minus four against the 49ers. That was four and so a half. Close to doing four that. and a half. Oh my yeah. god! Why didn't you do it, Hank? Why didn't you pull the trigger, coward? Uh, just the I I wrote that down, and then I went to the website, and I was like, if the Rams have a higher percentage, I'll do the Rams, but they didn't. Okay. So you so you're under the the idea that Trey Lance just is bad. I'm under the idea that I mean the the Rams have the 49ers number. This seems like an easy pick to me. Is no, it the other way around? The though? other way around. Yeah, I know, I'm aware. Oh, you're trying to go you're trying to you're lose. Trying, As I explained last week, yes. Okay, that makes it fun. So four and a half. Um, four and a half. I yeah, Rams minus four and a half. I guess is my pick. So you're trying to lose all your picks today. This week and last week, as I explained on last week's show. You're trying to lose. So that you I did pretty good last week. I, I ended up going one and three. Okay. Um, I got road no, trip fever, We don't fever, need to do baby. the conversation again, but it's not fun when it's when the whole competition comes down to people trying to intentionally lose. I'm, Next year we have to figure out something that has no upside whatsoever so we avoid I this. don't know why you're upset that I want to go on a road trip. I We've done this conversation a million times. I'm not upset you want to go on a road trip. I'm upset that we did a competition that was supposed to be punishment that the viewers wanted to listen to, and then in the last two weeks you're like, I want to lose. There's so much chaos that, that goes into these last two weeks. Even if you were trying to lose this competition, you really couldn't do it. Right, but you, you We're not good enough at the, gambling to be able to – The Rams to have the Niners lose. number. Um, okay, Billy – or I'll go with my favorite. I'm taking the Bucks minus eight. Uh, not only is there so much controversy going around, Tom Brady writing the ship, also Tom Brady can uh, get the passing record with 488 yards, I want to think, I want to say. So he's definitely going to try to get that. So Bucks minus eight, 
it feels like he'll just keep trying to throw uh, late, uh, even if it's a blowout, to try to get that record. How many more records can Tom Brady possibly get? He gets so many records. He's collected all of them. Yes, he has. Uh, P, uh, Billy. Chargers by two and a half. Ooh. Is it still two and a half? Three. Oh. Three. All right. Wait, it's locked. No, it's they locked try, in. Yeah. You can't do to buy that half point. You can't do buy that half point. I don't know. No, this one is just like, this is the only real game on the schedule. So I was like, where it's not like these guys are competing to get into the playoffs. So you don't think it's going to come down to like a field goal, you know, one point win because they're so close? Yeah, well, now it's three. I'm sort of like, because if I get a push, that's fucked. I don't know. I'm still going with it. Chargers. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> okay. So, thank, thank you. This Thanks. game's going to be awesome. <laughs> Um, I am going with the Cardinals minus six and a half at home against the Seattle Seahawks. For me, this just comes down to motivation versus no motivation. Or more motivation, I should say. Because the Cardinals want more some more motivation. momentum heading into the playoffs. But the Chargers, it, ironically, would kind of rather play on the road for the first round of the playoffs. They you mean the Cardinals? So, sorry, yeah, yeah, the Cardinals, because they stink at That's home. That's true. But yeah. a win streak. They yeah. won last week. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, who? So now we're going with the underdogs. So everyone's got their favorites. No overlap, which is kind of crazy. Underdogs. Um, hey, my underdog. I'm sure PMT Stats Info could pull up the stat. I've I've ridden them all year. They've been one of the best covering teams all year. They don't care about their record. They're going to be out there fighting and scrapping for every inch, every every claw, every nail. Lions plus three and a half. PFT's yep. giving me a look like okay. he also did that. No, I did not oh, do that. God, I did not take the Lions. It's a good pick though. Thank you. Jordan Love versus TB12. Is yeah. it is it going to be TB12 or is it going to be golf? golf? I don't know. Yeah. Golf syrup. Um. Yeah, that game, a, a game that doesn't matter at all. But you know, it matters Lions. to the Lions yeah. and Dan yes, Campbell. Yes, correct. And their correct. draft, I looked it up briefly, but I don't think their draft pick like can be affected by a win or loss here. Maybe a loss they can get one, but if they win, they're not going to like go, you know, go from the two right. to like the six so it doesn't matter if they win so they're going to want to win now do we know that it's going to be jordan love because aaron Rodgers, maybe if he plays well enough this week he might be motivated to go out there and try to get that vote back from hub to try yeah, to try shout to get out that hub arkish i don't know why hub arkish uh wrote a whole entire blog saying sorry aaron Rodgers is a bad guy he should be in prison his voting sounded correct to me sounds like aaron so. Rodgers canceled him and Rodgers is pro. They called him a jerk. Culture, he did. Right? Yeah, he canceled Hub. Yeah, yeah. It's a real shame. Um, like he's not I very love that whole story. <laughs> it was such a great story. Hub having to then apologize and be like, "I, I, I embarrassed all the other voters." It's like, no, dude. Like, you should vote for whoever you want. Maybe you shouldn't. No, you know what? Aaron Rodgers is a bad guy. He should be in prison. Good on you, Hub. All right, uh, Liam, your underdog. Uh, I took the 49ers plus four and a half. Mm. Okay. Is it, is it four or four and a half? Yeah, what did we get on that one? Four and a half. So you're head to head with PFT. Okay. 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 Yeah, I don't know. They just okay. have the number. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, PFT. Um, pick you're trying to lose. My, my underdog is the Jets. I got the Jets plus oh, 16. These guys get paid to play. And 16 and a half? Even better. These guys get paid to play football too. They're professionals. The Jets. They might I, win. The Jets might win outright. I'll, I'm, I'm a, I'll be pulling for the this Jets. Is, this is also my underdog, and it's going to be a statement game. I've rode the Jets, I think now it's going to be 11 times that, on the, the underdog every week. <laughs> and they've, the they've taken me to the bottom. So they're either going to take me, you know, get me out of this or send me off with another uh, letdown. But 16 and a half is a lot of points, and we saw how they played last week. They're electric. They're gearing up for an awesome rebuilding offseason and coming out strong for week one against the Bills where they're definitely going to, like, shellack them. Are you sure that they don't want to put too much tape out there for the Bills to know how they're going to play them in week one of next year? It's going to be a totally different team by then. We're, you know, burning the burning the ships, going after it. <laughs> I was so close to taking that just because I, I knew you were going to, but I didn't. Burning the, I, I knew Billy was going to take it too. Yeah. It's like that's a lot of points. Yeah, Billy's right. Billy's mind says if the Jets are underdogs, I'm going to bet them. And this yes. is like close to 20 points they're giving them. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean it's 16 and a half. Still got to go over 17 to get to 20. Close to 20. We'll get there. Uh, all right, my underdog. I'm going with the Raiders plus three. So I'm going up against Billy on that one. 
I don't know why. I just think Derek Carr. I just had a vision that Derek Carr is going to have a big, big throw late against the Chargers on uh, Sunday night. And like that interview after where Derek Carr can basically say, you know, everyone counted us out. We had so much adversity and everyone just starts, you know, fawning over Derek Carr and what an incredible season. Rich Pasicchia, that's in my vision board. Yeah. You're going to get make make or break with like a fourth down conversion. A few fourth down conversions yeah, by the right. Chargers. Because like, they, if they convert them, they might go up 20. But if they don't, then they should be up 20 and they're down 10. And right. they're definitely going to try to go for it on fourth down because you can't beat the Raiders. with These aren't the Broncos. You need touchdowns no. to beat them. You remember last year's game? I think it was a Thursday night game, the Chargers and the Raiders. This game kicked ass. I'm hoping that this game is like 50% as cool as that game was. Yes, that was a cool game. Um, okay, uh, Jake, finish us off with your underdog. Yeah, I'm taking the Houston Texans plus 10 at home against the Tennessee Titans a couple of weeks ago. They were big dogs at home to the Chargers, and they won outright. So maybe another win to close it out. Mm-hmm. They've beaten the Titans before. Even though the Titans are playing for the one seed, they've beaten them before. So yeah, not a good pick. Mills Mafia. There was an article that okay. came out today about Deshaun Watson. Apparently his trade value has gone way up over the course of the season. So at the trade deadline, there was um, it was rumored that the Dolphins, I think, were trying to ship either two or three first-round picks to Houston, but they wanted some guarantee about the legal matters that Deshaun was going through um, that they would be resolved or that it wouldn't have an impact on those picks. But uh, apparently now there's multiple teams that are very, very interested in playing in, in uh, trading for Deshaun Watson this offseason. So that's going to be just like looming out there for, for months at a time, I think, because I don't think we're any closer to resolution on the legal matters, are we? No, I don't think so. Although we haven't heard, so who knows? Who knows at this point? Last I heard from uh, Florida, I think he was saying it's going to take two years to sort this whole thing geez. out. But a year of sucking at football for most NFL franchises is enough to overlook whatever fucked up thing you're accused of. Yes, there's a lot of teams that could potentially want Deshaun Watson yep. this offseason. Uh, okay, you're over, Hank. Uh, I will be betting the Jets plus 16 and a half. I will be rooting for the Jets. Uh, and another way to root for that is a taking the over 41 and a half in this game. The Jets are going to win. You assume that that over is going to hit, right? That's just logic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Walk me through that. Jets win. Well, it's Zach Wilson off platform bombs. Got it. If the Jets can score like 14 points, then that's going to cover because the Jets will, the Bills will either blow them out. This is just, this is a Jets bet. This is a pro Jets bet. If the Jets score one or two times, this can cover. Okay. 41 and a half. There it is. is. Yeah. All right. Still there. Okay. Liam, you're over. Uh, I have Eagles Cowboys over 42 and a half. Saturday night. I had that. That was my first over as well. Mm. Keep that mark. Gardner that Minshew. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I saw it Saturday now. night. Feels like 43. Just feels like points. This does feel like the perfect game for Gardner Minshew to go off in. Like a state a yeah. statement game for him where he's like, Yeah, I, I deserve to be paid a lot of money. But I also think the Cowboys, like, they wanna not be losing going into the playoffs. I mean, obviously they don't want to be losing. That that was dumb. But yeah. like get a win before. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And the NFC Beast. Yeah, have some momentum going. Uh all right, PFT, you're over. I got Colts Jags, forty four. Taking the over on that one. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence reasoning. Because you want to well, lose? I, I mean, I, I could explain why I took this when I'm trying to lose, but I, I've already said, like, I want to, just like last week, I want to miss all these picks. So uh, feel free to fade me. I'm taking the over, though. Colts, Jags, 44 points. Okay, Billy, you're over. Uh, the don't please don't fire me game, Bears-Vikings, 44 and a half. The coaches are going to try to keep their Both jobs. Both guys probably getting fired. But they're yeah. going to try guys... to keep their jobs with the statement win, I don't, I'd put agree. up points. I don't think Mike Zimmer wants to be coaching the Vikings next year. I think I saw Justin Fields went into COVID protocol. He did. So, but there was a moment there where Matt Nagy could have could have made a first where Justin Fields was named the starter, and if Matt Nagy had won that game, this game Sunday, he would have been the first coach ever to win three straight games with three different starters. Wow. Which would have been hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Greatest coach ever. That's in, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> like, you don't yes. see that. In the NFL, it's all about the quarterback position. Matt Nagy's a right. guy that can get it done with anyone. Three different starters trying to prove it at the last second that he can do it with anyone. Yeah, I, I, don't, think, uh, I don't think Mike Zimmer wants to be around next year 
So that that's where my hesitation with that one would come in. I think he wants to be fired. He wants to be fired already. Yeah, he's tired of it. He's definitely tired of it. All right, my over, I'm doing Cardinal Seahawks over 48. I don't know, just a fun game. And I think Russell Wilson's definitely going to try to get stats. 48? Like he's 48, not? 48. What is it? Okay. What did you better. think it was, Hank? 40, I what'd you think I had it was? 46 written down. Oh, shit. Uh, I, yeah, I just, Russell Wilson's going to try to get stats. He's, he's, there's nothing else for the Seahawks to play for besides throwing it deep to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Jake. I am with Liam, Dallas, Philadelphia, over 43. Oh, so it's 43. Yes, not 42 and a half. Okay, Saturday night. We got some Saturday night action just to start figuring everything out. All right, we'll wrap up with our unders, Hank. Uh, this is Card Seahawks. My reasoning is that today I had a different under, and then I was uh, going through the Barcelona Sports Advisors. You guys talked about this game. Stu gave a very passionate pitch on the under, and I'm riding with him. This is my Stu Finer under of the year. Under of the year? Yeah. And you liked it at 46. You love it at yeah, 48. Yeah, that's when, when you said 48. I was like, oh, even better. So, so what goes into – are you just like riding Stu on this, or are you actually thinking – no, well, that's what I said. I'm all over the place. I've just been looking for signs in different places. And, and it was one of those things, you know, we go through the show, he makes five picks, there's five different games, and something stuck out with, you know, his his passion, the way he talked about it. It just seemed like he knew something, and I'm I'm riding with him. It's not like he always picks unders, so when he does, you got to take it. There's certain games that stick in your head for a while, and the game that sticks in my head with this matchup is I think it was Monday night football. It was a night, maybe Thursday night, a couple years ago when it was like that overtime game that was, I think, 6-9 or something like that, where every team kept missing field goals. Or was it a tie? It might have been the tie game. No. Was that last year when Kyler got hurt? No, no. This was several years ago where um, you had you had kickers missing all the short field goals at the end of the game in overtime too. I think it might have ended up in a tie. So I – even though these two teams can score points, every time I see them matched up, I always think under. Love that. Love that for me. October 23rd, 2016, 6-6. Time. There we go, yeah. Uh, okay, you're under Liam. Um, I'm going Giants football team under 38. That's also my under. Smart okay. pick. I think that's a smart pick. Wait, what's the what's the total? Is it 38? 38. Does that guarantee that Billy really loses, basically? So, Billy was two no. behind Liam, so now Liam would have to lose out and Billy would have to win, it, win out. But me and Big Cat are technically, if we go on four, we can still catch Billy if he goes four now. So, that's big for Liam, bad for Billy. Oh, damn. We could so tie. We both have Jets. Because if, if I went one and three, you went three and one. No, but, but I think you, guys both you have, have Jets. jets. Too. No, I don't have the Jets. Uh, oh. No, no. No, Billy and... Uh, PFT no, I took the 49ers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we're doing win probability here for, for loss probability, Billy is at like 90% that he's going to go. That just went from like, yeah, it probably made it closer, but it doesn't lock anything in. doesn't lock in, but Billy's like, you're 90%. I think if Big Cat goes 0-4 and, and I go 4-0. No. Correct. Yes. Same with me. Yeah. I'm screwed. You need either yep. me, Liam, or Big Cat to, go to lose every pick except that one you guys have the same in. Could definitely happen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, PFT, your last one. Under. Bubba, I think that's a good pick, by the way. Football team Giants. Thank you. This is the, the, the clown that. franchise bowl, which Joe Judge will not do any media calls to address the fact that he called the football team a, a clown show, which he's correct in, by the way, 100% correct, but also just kind of ignoring the fact that he has led the Giants to also become a clown franchise. Glennon is not starting. Yes. Jake Fromm is. I would have been more confident if Glennon was starting. On the under, yeah, but but Jake Fromm. Remember, just there. J- Jake Fromm got benched for Mike Glennon. I know, so it's gonna be Jake Fromm is technically worse than Mike Glennon. But that, th- how many passing yards did he have the other day? Negative ten. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's he's also quite liable to get a fumble six against him. True. Just feels like yeah. there's gonna be some turn. That's gonna be an ugly game. Congratulations to anyone that chooses to. To watch that. I apologize to everybody in the New York metropolitan area that is forced to watch that game on Sunday. Um, I'm sorry about that. My under is going to be Chargers Raiders, forty nine and a half. Is that it? Yeah, forty nine and a half under Chargers Raiders. Means it might all come okay. down to Sunday night. Is that why you did it? Might all come down to Sunday. I actually, night. no. I, I wasn't thinking about that at all. But that that is a, a fun little addition. 
Uh, all right, I'm taking the Packers uh, Lions under 44 and a half. TB12 versus Jordan Love. Just give me the under. And Jake, you're finishing us up. Yes, the final pick of the year is going to be Browns. Bengals under 37 and a half. I know Burrow's out. I believe Baker's out too, right? Mixon yep. too. Yeah, so backups. Yeah, there's some ugly games on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Some real ugly games. Yeah. Good luck We're betting week 18. What do you think is going to happen with Baker this offseason? You think he's going to be traded? I think he'll be I, – I think he'll they'll bring him back because the his fifth year, like they might as well just roll the dice and see how he performs fifth year because he's already – you know, you have him locked up if you want him to be. Yeah. He, he right? seemed – Haven't they – There was a report that wait, came out – haven't they already offered him? Have they already offered him the fifth year? I don't know. Didn't they already have to do that? I don't know if that's been offered or not yet. I think they might – they probably have until March. They exercise uh, quarterback Baker Mayfield's fifth-year option, locking him up with the franchise through 2022. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they have to do that earlier. Right. Right. So they'll, they'll keep him because what are you going to do? I mean, you're not going to be able to trade him, and you might as well see if he can do better. I think there. I think some teams will make an offer for Baker Mayfield this offseason. I think they'll at least take Maybe. a couple phone calls. They might not do it because you're right. Having a guy that has been proven that at least he's he can be good when when he's locked in. To have him at that price tag is probably a net benefit for the Browns, no matter what you think about him. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, anything else for Week 18? Good luck to everyone. This is a tough week to yeah. handicap to bet. To do everything. Also, a reminder, if anyone ties, the tiebreaker is those two or even three guys go into wild card weekend where they have to pick a spread or total on every single game. So all six games, you have to pick – you have to make one pick on every single game. That's the tiebreaker. Understood. And then if that gets Should we tied have again, seven total we go to the picks, next. So, it's, so there's no three and three ties situation? Like one game, you have to pick a spread and. You can still tie if it's if it's seven total picks though. Yeah, you can both go, three you can both four. go four yeah, and yeah. three. If I tie, can I still just go? Right. <laughs> no. No. Actually, that's what you guys should have done to fuck me over. Be like, okay, PFT can't go. Like flip it back and forth. I tr- I said that. I said you'd have to take a flight and and do a bunch of delays, and you got upset. No, I'm saying like have it be. Forced me to try to win to go. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm, I'm lost at this point. I thought we'd just do a competition that we had for 16 weeks. It was going well. It was going well. I'm just being honest. That Road tripping sounds like a lot, of, especially if it's to Dallas, which I, I actually don't think that the game is going to be played in Dallas. I think it's going to probably stay in Los Angeles, and unless it's a scenario where they like actually can't have the game, can't have fans in the game. That's going to be yeah. what it takes to move it to Dallas. Uh, okay, so should we get to our interview? We've got a great interview with Ryan Rosillo. Great interview, uh, and then we'll do a fire fest so we can send everyone on their way. PFT, you got a quick word from Coors Light? Yeah, before we get to Ryan Rosillo, Coors Light is back. Coors Light never left. It's made to chill. It's mountain cold refreshment. Got to reach for a Coors Light. If you feel like you're always on and you need a moment to chill, you got to hit the reset button. You got to get ready for what's next. These days, everything is go, go, go. It's nothing but nonstop hustle all the time. There's an expectation that you have to be on 24-7. I'm here to debunk that. You don't have to be on 24-7. You need a moment to turn off and hit reset. That's when you reach for a Coors Light. It's made to chill. The only beer out there that's made to chill. Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans turn blue when your beer is cold. It's amazing. It's maybe the best piece of technology to ever happen to our fair country. The mountains turn blue. That way you always know when it's time to chill. Coors Light's made to chill. Cracking open to Coors Light is perfect on this last week 18 of the NFL season. Going into Sunday night, you better believe it's time to crack open an ice-cold Coors Light. That's the one I choose when I need to unwind. When you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light and the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. CoorsLight.com slash take. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend. It is Ryan Rosillo. Been too long. We want to have Ryan on. We're going to do some NBA preview. We're going to talk a little football as well. Go subscribe to the Ryan Rosillo podcast right now. Um, Just so we can give some context, uh, we're going to be running this on Friday. Today is January 5th. Do you have any big plans for tomorrow, Ryan? 
Well, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, first, going to, qu- first real I'm question. Going, I'm going to look at boats. Um, yeah? You're going to join I'm a not, parade? I was going to. Single file. All right, so we do have you on to talk sports. Um, oh, okay. NBA. Let's start with, uh, is anyone beating the Lakers this year? Look, I haven't watched any games yet because of football. <laughs> but I'll tell you, just taking in the off season, there's two things I feel strongly about. And I'll have to go look this up later on. But I'm not as high on this Lakers team as everybody else is. I'm just going to oh, say that. Okay. Yeah. Russell Westbrook, though. I mean, this guy is a, a generational talent. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a problem. <laughs> He's a problem. It, He's a walking bucket. We know that. It, in all seriousness with the Lakers, though, because I... So we're not doing this? No, we're not we doing won't do the whole preview? time. I will, okay. No, we won't. Yeah. I was going to see how long we could go. People and be, like, I'd be like, what you what know, I sneaky like the Bulls. Yeah, yeah. I think I think DeMar DeRozan is going to be clutch for them. Um, the, all right, real talk. Yeah, go ahead. real talk. Lakers, real quick. Yeah. Uh, is it... There's two lines of thinking. One, this team is uh, a mess and it never will fit. Or two, Anthony Davis is hurt and LeBron's still LeBron, so never bet against them. Once the playoffs start, they'll figure it out. Yeah, I think both can actually be right, by the way. Um, You know, they're one game over 500 now. They actually have the same record as the fifth seed so they're there with Denver and Dallas just percentage points behind uh, as the day of taping this, right? LeBron's been in an absolute tear. Uh, They, like a lot of teams, have had to deal with a bunch of different things but Anthony Davis when he played was arguably like the worst jump shooter in the league based on how many shots he was taking, where he was taking from and the lack of converting them. I mean, they were horrible, horrible stats. Like there was one stat was like out of so many guys have taken four attempts you know, from this distance in the entire league, out of 108, he ranks 108th or something. I mean, they were terrible. And I don't know if he put on too much size. It's something Simmons and I have talked about a little bit too, where I feel like everybody called him a pussy last year. And he gets you guys get sick of it, you know? I can't imagine how mad I would be if I were a pro athlete and I turn on TNT and it's like everybody thinks I'm a pussy the whole time. Yeah. So I just feel like, all right, well, now I'm definitely lifting more. And I think he came back, and I think the bulk has actually slowed him down, and it just didn't work. So, I mean, I'd ask you this. If Anthony Davis were just, you know, moderate levels of Anthony Davis, not a terrible version of him, which is what he's been so far this year, if he were healthy and a decent version of him, isn't that good enough for at least five more wins? And that would kind of put him in the four seed spot, all right? Uh, I don't think any of the teams outside of the top three in Utah, Phoenix, and Golden State, I don't don't think those three teams are going to get caught by any of the standings behind them. But the Westbrook part of this is why I can sound so annoying uh, and repetitive but it still happened again today. I watched something from ESPN. It was a former player. They were talking about all the great things Russ brings in. And I'm just like, how many fucking years do you have to watch this guy do the exact same thing that never leads to winning and think that it's just magically going to work out at some point? Like most of us don't change. And a basketball player that's as stubborn as he is isn't going to change. So I like Westbrook in the offseason to the Lakers for the regular season because LeBron, AD, Melo, the older guys, they were going to need to coast at times. Russell Westbrook's a great energy guy. But then in the playoffs, I go, it doesn't make any sense. He doesn't offer up any spacing for AD and LeBron. He's never set a screen in his fucking life. And you know, on top of it now, he's even a worse shooter and more turnover prone than before. So the Westbrook thing, the only way they solve it is is by having AD and LeBron focus on what they do and hopefully them both being healthy at the end of the year because I still think there's a chance but Westbrook, I don't see basketball-wise how he's involved in that success because he's just not a good fit. So would it have been a better fit if they had gotten someone who's like won a ton in his career and a bunch of rings like Chris Paul? You guys froze. <laughs> Your son. You love him like a son. Wait a minute. You froze. You froze. No, we didn't actually freeze. We didn't actually freeze. Yeah. No, you did. You froze. You froze. I got the Chris Paul joke now, though. Go ahead. Okay. Do you want to just tee it up again? No, no I, Chris Paul. I, you love I, Chris Paul. I see. Your comments. I My question was, would the Lakers be in a better spot if they had a guy who has a bunch of rings and a bunch of winning pedigree like Chris <laughs> Paul? <laughs> yeah, no, I get, I get that the Westbrook people, because Westbrook can't get out of the first round um, other than the time they beat the Thunder when it was Chris Paul on the other side of it. But Chris <laughs> Paul, his <laughs> exits in the playoffs – are because of injury, not stubbornness. Got all right, it. go through all the years where he and Blake lost. One of those guys was always hurt. So when I see a lot of these things about Paul, like not being able to win, like I actually think these things are malleable. Like you can go, wait a minute, is this guy not getting out of the first round because of him, or is it because of other circumstances? This is not 
being hypocritical. It's just, it, these are just facts. Look them up. I think that Look Westbrook, at who was available. Westbrook just has a branding problem. If he was in football, they'd call him a gunslinger. Like you saw him after the game when he was he was saying, "I'm allowed to turn the ball over. It's part of my game. I'm allowed to miss shots. It's part of my game." I think that they're like that. Obviously, got taken as a quote that was splashed everywhere. But there is there's some element of truth to it. But it's like how much how much can you limit Russell Westbrook being Russell Westbrook? Because if you can even cut that down 20, 30 percent in the playoffs, then he might not, he might be able to figure it out. Who knows? No, I already know. The answer is no. Why, why, is, he, why is he just going to, like, this is what's insane to me. And, and again, PFT, you didn't play in the league, unfortunately. We not know like your you. story. Yeah. Right. But I'm talking about the people that played in the league that still will go on TV being like, ah, oh, you know, you know, a little, little trim here, a little shave here off of this corner. Be like, no, this is who he is. And it's what got him to this point because he was a kid that didn't have a lot of offers out of high school. He was a guy at UCLA. They were like, we don't really even know what to do with this guy. And how when he got drafted, I remember talking to um, Carlissimo about it because he and Presti were arguing. Carlissimo wanted them to take Brooke Lopez. And Presti was like, I think we got something like really special, like another level. I think Westbrook's the best athlete I've ever seen play basketball, ever. Okay, I think he's the best athlete I've ever seen play basketball. But there is a there is a buy-in for the 38 minutes that you're out there or whatever that you have to pay attention. And this is why I just laugh because I'm like, I didn't play, I didn't coach, but I noticed his shit and guys that did it for a living can't even see it. He off the ball in huge spots defensively almost always fucks up. Almost always. I could pick the next game they're on. I'll just wait until it's close at the end and I'll see him miss somebody in a rotation just because he decides like, nah, I'm just going to spaz out and do this. Those mistakes to me are worse than just an ill-advised three or a long two off the side of the backboard. So I, I don't know why anybody thinks it's just going to change because I think unfortunately the curse of Russ is that his personality got him here, but his personality is what prevents him ever finding a way to adapt to the things that are around him. And uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm sorry, but when I talk to people about it and, and they start telling me like how it can all work and a little this, a little that, or LeBron will get them to listen to all this stuff, I don't really want to listen to that person talk about basketball anymore. Hmm. Okay, so this interview's over. Well, it sounds like it sounds like <laughs> Ryan is really mad at somebody in particular. Who? You Say got the name. you got real mad Say earlier. The name. Big Say mad. The name. Ryan big mad when you were like, he's just not gonna fucking change, right? <laughs> Say like, it. Who is it? Because it it's, it's everybody. It's everybody that either coached in the league or played in the league, and they're afraid to say the truth. Because if I'm at home, again, who never played a game anyone cared about, they can figure out in the Patty Mills thing, be like, why did you just lose Patty Mills in a switch for no fucking reason? It's because you just couldn't, you couldn't help yourself. You're like, I'm going to help. I'm going to break our assignments. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, Patty Mills has only made like seven threes tonight, and I'll just let him, like, that's just, that shit happens every night. It happens sounds like, multiple it sessions. It sounds like he's got ADD. Mm. Sounds like you're shaming him for, for a learning disability. <laughs> well, now I feel bad. Yeah. yeah. Now you take it all back. All right. Uh, biggest free agent acquisition, Clay Thompson or Kyrie Irving? <laughs> I love uh, whatever we frame guy coming back from injury is. You know who actually won free agency? This is the old Kevin White. Yeah, the Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors did because they got Clay back. I know. I know. I hate when guys used to do that. You'd like have a segment built out. Be like, well, the biggest biggest acquisition at the trade dead, deadline is Clay. Yeah, and you're like, all right, cool. No one's ever thought of that. So tricky way. Yeah, so to give get us into who, it. Who who wins more right now, Clay? Because Clay, Clay, it's not even close. Clay's a better player, and Clay's more dependable, and Clay's available for all games, and he's not banned for half of them. <laughs> it's such a funny okay, situation fine. in that sort. It's like, guess what, guys? We're back. Kyrie's coming back to play with us on a limited basis. Yeah, until he feels like such a time where he can join the team on a full-time basis. So, so, until Kyrie Irving is allowed to play in the state of New York, then I don't know if you can really <laughs> say like he's going to make that much of a difference. Um, I, I think the whole thing is like, you know, I mean, Kyrie barely plays full seasons anymore. Um, you know, he, he was, he was one of the voices. It was like, we should just do our own thing, start our own league guy. Um, you know, he's he's your friend that hangs out at the beach and looks at the horizon and goes, Can't believe people think this shit's round. You know? <laughs> and I'm not even I'm not even talking about his flat earth joke that he then later on, by the way, said was an experiment to try to see how we would react to it, which sounded very much like his vaccination status and that it wasn't that he was anti vax, it's that he wanted to be a voice for the voiceless because they were trying to figure out some sort of PR spin as everybody's like, Fuck this guy for a couple of weeks. And they were like, No, no, actually we're doing this for the waitresses out there. Mm -hmm. It was like, Oh, all right, word. Facts. Um 
I, I feel bad for Nash in a way, even though, you know, he was kind of gifted a championship caliber team here. Um, so you can't feel bad for him there. But this has to be getting old pretty quickly in only his second season. Yeah. Where, you know, they were like, look, I mean, this is even about the owner, too. The owner visited with Kyrie before the season started, said, hey, when you have a championship caliber team, there's some buy in here that we have to have. And so let's talk to you and educate you on everything you need to know so that you're all comfortable. But this needs buy in from everyone around. And he was like, nah, fuck that. I'm just going to post weird shit on Instagram instead. So when he was available for, for road games because of the city ordinance, the team's like, no. No. So the funny thing is he still is going to make half of his $33 million because they have to pay him for the games that they've banned him from on the road games, even though he's ineligible for home games. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we're at this point where he returns this week and you go, oh, all right. Wait a minute. Like Nash and the team are probably like, look, if we have guys that are like borderline G League players and the whole thing's a mess now with Omicron anyway, we might as well just bring them back. And have him be a part of the mess. And the thing is, knowing Kyrie and his skill set, he'll probably come out and it, you know, it won't matter. And then that team's scary again. Well, so I think basketball wise, it makes sense. When you were just talking about this, a thought popped in my head. What what is the link between Kevin Durant and Kyrie? Because on the surface, they do seem like completely opposite people in the fact that I think you Kevin Durant is is the number one uh guy who's like loves basketball anything he ever says you know whenever he he wants to play all the time he is truly in love with basketball even when he's he's like critiquing like 14 year old kids on instagram calling their moves trash like that's coming from a place of like love you know what i mean he actually loves the game to a level i think a lot of guys don't Kyrie, maybe not like he doesn't he, he he's okay not playing so how do those two guys like just on a relationship level fit it's such a good question, dude. I'm serious. Like, I think about Thanks. this. Yeah. Don't you love when guys in interviews and it's like they don't really have an answer and they stall and good they're like, question. great question. Yeah. They're not, they're, they're not stalling, though. They're always actually yeah. genuinely complimenting yeah. their questions. Yes. It might not happen to you mm-hmm. that much, but for us, nah. yeah. experienced nah. interviewers. But it is. It's fascinating. I, just, I don't know why it took me this long to just think about it. It was you explaining Kyrie, like, not playing a lot of full seasons. And it's because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That's why it's so interesting because you're right. KD is all about hoops. Hoop all the time. And by the way, we should do something. We should all send basketball clips, DM Kevin Durant right now. Let's make this a thing from now on. If you're just taking jumpers, you're trying to get wet out back, you know, send that, DM that, that video to Kevin Durant and let him know that you love hoop too. That's how I initially started talking to him. I was I, I did an Instagram oh, video. Oh, look at this guy. No, I did an Instagram video of a pickup hoops game. That I was playing in, and he just he out of the clouds responded in DM saying, "Get this trash off my court." Wow! So yeah, he okay. loves hoops. <laughs> he loves hoops, but I think the fact that he even has that in him, like, can you imagine other NBA superstars like taking the time to do something like that? <laughs> and so the fact that he would be like, "No, I'm hitching my wagon to Kyrie," it never made any sense while it was happening. Guys that kind of knew the deal with Kyrie, and look, I'll tell you this about Kyrie: the guys that really know what's up are actually more like. They're less critical because they just want. They hope they hope he kind of sifts his way through whatever it is that he's going through. You know what I mean? Right. Like, hey, if you love hoop, and Kyrie's like, oh man, I love hoop, I love hoop. How could you ever take this away from me? You know, I Rod Strickland, who's his godfather, right? Rod Strickland, who was an absolute motherfucker of a guard. All right, he said, you know, Kyrie might be the most talented player ever, and people crushed him for it. When in fact, like when you really put all the talent parts of Kyrie together, his handle, his shot making, the difficult shot making that is an acceptable shot for Kyrie, all of the stuff that he can do, wrong foot, wrong hand, all that. Like it's actually not crazy to talk about him being actually one of the most gifted basketball skill people that we've ever seen. Now, would I want him to be the face of my franchise? Of course not, because you just don't know what you're betting on. And the fact that that Durant would be like, okay, I'm down for this for like the next four years in my prime championship window or extending my prime championship window, never made any sense. Now, for people that say, hey, he turned down the most stable thing ever and the most selfless teammate of all time of the superstars and maybe Steph Curry, but but KD couldn't fuck with it because it was like, this is all still Steph's. It happened before I got here. They won the title before me. They played in the finals before I got here. I got my titles. I had fun playing basketball. But if I want my own thing, I got to get away from Steph. But the fact that he did it with Kyrie... I can't explain it, but people seem to love him. Like, ask Blake next time you have him on. Not Bortles. But when I, I ask somebody who's close to Blake Griffin, I go, why is he going to the Nets? He's like, dude, he loves Kyrie. Yeah. These guys love him. I yeah. think I think 
if you're that talented at anything, so with Kevin Durant, he's he's better than everybody, right? He's he's probably the best player in the NBA right now. I agree with that. Best player in the right. world right now. But there are things that Kyrie Irving can do that Kevin Durant cannot do. And if you're that good and you see somebody able to do things that even you can't do, even though you're the best, I think there's like an inherent level of respect where you want to be around that guy. Yeah, that might be it because there was a clip that was out with the the Knuckleheads guys, Darius and, and Quentin, where they had Durant on and they were asking about like just what's it like being around Kyrie and, and Durant couldn't even get his thoughts out clearly. Yeah. Like he's just shaking his head. He's like, man, we'll be doing shit where it isn't like part of the practice where he just goes off and does something on his own. And you look at some of the stuff he does. So that might be it. It might be just being in awe. But here's what I would say to Kevin Durant if I were really close to them, you know, prior to the decision, which already happened, but then also influencing whatever decision I make moving forward. It's like, is this the guy that you want as your number two? Or, you know, whatever his ranking would be with the Harden part of it there as well, as Harden still can't get back into shape. Um, like you you're you're you only have so many years left. So at what point will you look at your window saying, I need some guys to ride with that I am like 100% sure of where their head is at when it comes to basketball? Because you're right, Big Cat. Durant, it's never a question about how much he cares about basketball and being part of a team. And despite what on paper could be a champion, I still think if the Nets were healthy last year, they would have beat everybody. Yeah. I don't really know how there's much debate to it. So maybe it still works out despite how frustrating it's been the whole time. But I would have to think Durant in some private moments is going – if I have you know X number of years left in this whole deal, do I still want it to be with guys that don't seem to be as locked in as I am? Which I think is a completely fair question to ask, and surprising if he never did. What about what about the other big addition that they're going to make in free agency, which is your other favorite player, Joe Harris, the best uh, catch and shoot player in the NBA playoffs for the first two rounds. That's going to be a pretty big. He's piece a friend, of the puzzle, right? Um, look, I like Joe Harris going back to college. Yeah, no, we do too. Yeah, we've had him on the show. We were you, I I don't want to give you shit for the take that you had about him, but I will say that you might you might have cursed him last year because ever since you said that he's like the best shooter in the NBA, then he just kind of took a nosedive. You sure that was me? I wouldn't say anybody's better than Steph. We've had, we're, you ha we're having you on are. just to roast your takes if you haven't figured that out. Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't remember. Joe I remember we had Kirk Goldsberry. Oh, it was Kirk, Kirk Goldsberry. Goldsberry. Yeah, he's got yeah. COVID brain still. I do. I got. Kirk, I got. I knew it wasn't yeah, me. No, I just wanted to Kirk, see where this is going. Long, long fog. <laughs> Kirk Goldsberry came on the show and we talked about how the Nets are like in so insane offensively, and then they and then Joe Harris never hit a three after that. The Kyrie point though, I still remember we went to a, it was the, the game that PFT actually lost his wallet in the Cleveland uh, Cavs arena. We went to. I think it was like Celtics Cavs game four or five ish in 2017 when he scored 42 and he scored like 18 in a row and it was we were just sitting there with our with our jaws on the floor because every shot was insane every layup was insane and it was like this guy can just do whatever he wants so he it is he's he's an incredible he's, incredible player he's the best small finisher I've ever seen at the rim. I've never seen anyone like him at his size consistently beat guys in the way. You know, again, people would be like, oh, what about Iverson? I'm like, look it up. Look up. But Iverson had a, a two or three year stretch where it was crazy. You know, I mean, it's AI. But Kyrie consistently, whether it's showing it and taking it away from you, crazy angles of release, understanding all that. You know, look, I'm not even a, like I, people could be like, oh, you're from Boston. You don't like Kyrie. I didn't like watching it at the end because that team was so like full of themselves and they they weren't that good. And he's he's a tough guy to sign up for every night. But if we're just talking pure basketball skill, it isn't crazy, I don't think, to put Kyrie up there with everybody else. It's just a different conversation. We're just talking about like, hey, well, does that make him top 10 of all time? Well, no, no, that's not what we're doing. We're just talking strictly about the skill stuff. And you're right. Yeah. He has stretches where you're just like, you have to be fucking kidding and me. And the spins that he puts on his shots too. He'll like switch hands at the last second in midair. And then he'll he'll put side spin on a shot as it goes up to the glass, you know, behind his neck, and somehow be able to perfectly bank it off and in. It's crazy. I, I actually do think that people would think he was a witch if it was the 1800s and they saw him playing basketball. They'd be like, "This person's not. This is not." Basketball human. wasn't, dude. Basketball wasn't invented. Though. Yeah, that's why they think he he was a witch. Yeah, be like, what game are you playing right now? <laughs> what do you think would be the weirdest time travel situation? Of like, I think boxing. We talked about this with Chris Long. But if you just went in a time machine and was like, all right, let's let's find a heavyweight who'd be like 185, 
and he would just sit there with his his fists like upside down and uh, well, just kind of doing that what old, and then you just went in militant style against him it would be and they'd be like who the fuck is this guy i i still think it'd be like taking reggie white to like 1925 <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> you just throw the entire <laughs> offensive line <laughs> Yeah, that would be all right. Reggie White. Yes, like, I, I was just talking like random yeah, guy, but Aaron like Donald I, I look, I th- playing against like uh, Yale in 1902. Mine is like if Eddie House played in the 1950s, we would have Eddie House documentaries and specials, <laughs> and Eddie House would be he'd be up there with Mike. And. What if you took like a Roldis Chapman back to yeah. 18, 1881? Babe Ruth was trash. I don't like the Babe Ruth is trash stuff. I know he no. took away his pinstripes. Did you see that that Dude, swing and a miss that he had? He sucked. <laughs> awful, awful. Player. It is that line of like you can understand. You're you're absolutely right. Like basketball has come in such a way that you watch you watch highlights from 1950 or 1960. You're like these these guys aren't that good. But do you think you could score when you watch those highlights? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes the ones where they're just like dribbling the ball straight up and down and just. <laughs> They're kind of like pivoting around the ball. They're not even moving the ball. I, yeah, I, I think the other problem is if Eddie House went in a time machine, they'd call him for a carry the first seven times he had the basketball. <laughs> so they'd be like, wait a minute. Um, that was always Jerry West's big thing. He's like, you can't even, you know, he goes, the way you don't call carrying. I mean, I, I like Giannis. And it's back to your earlier point, PFT. Like, I agree with you on Durant being better than Giannis if we're going best player in the world, um, even though Giannis, you know, got him last year, sort of. Um because I just think it's still crazy how we'd be talking about Giannis and the Bucks and whether or not Bud would even be there if, if Durant's foot is behind the line because he was doing that with with a couple guys down. Um, I think from a basketball standpoint, like as much as we can all love Giannis, and I love Giannis, I love that Giannis has the personality, and this is one of the things like when it comes up with Ben Simmons, like I can this is back to like my Westbrook where you sort of expose yourself when somebody's like, well, if you just took Ben Simmons and turned him into the Giannis thing, it'd be fine. I'd be like, if you've been watching Ben Simmons and Giannis this much, and you can't tell the difference between their mentality when they walk onto a basketball court, right. then I can't fucking help you. Right. Okay, so I love that part of Giannis so much. But then if you were to watch Giannis and Durant just play basketball. And go, wait, I'm supposed to think this guy's better than the guy, Durant, who can dribble and is just like has the same height and can shoot like this off the dribble? Like, I wouldn't do that, would I? And honestly, this turns into the only people that would think we're crazy are the people that are from Milwaukee who are Bucks fans and they're emotionally attached to the whole fucking thing. Yeah. So, um, what was the point again? No, you just agreed. I agree as well. I think Kevin Durant's the best in the world. And I know LeBron, this is just rat poison for can, LeBron. Can you? Oh, it's a Giannis carries the. Basketball. Oh yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, so can, they should yeah. call that. But everybody kind of does. Can so. you fix if we put you if we put Ben Simmons on a psychology couch in your bedroom? There is that a bedroom? What is that? A futon? Yeah, this is a futon. You can have friends over. You watch TV, and then if, uh, if things work out, you sleep over. Cool. All right. So if Ben Simmons was on your futon, hanging out, listening to Van Halen with you, um, how would you fix whatever's going on inside Ben Simmons' head? <laughs> mm. <laughs> um. I I don't even know. I, first of all, we all know he wouldn't listen to me, right? So let's start there. Well, you've already given up, so you have a Ben Simmons personality. Maybe you got to be who he is. <laughs> I think you have to to, <laughs> to, to fix him. You got to mimic his personality. So good job so far. You got to you got to hug him right when he walks in the room. He needs somebody that'll hug him. I think. It's shown that it's crazy. he's supported and loved. It, it, like what's going to happen? It's crazy. You've never seen someone demand a trade when they have been the problem. Yeah, and he had four years left on the deal. <laughs> it's, like, it's like this was why from the beginning of the Ben Simmons stuff, I'd go, you realize this is a little different. Yeah. Like this is because people were starting to cover it like, all right, well, I wonder where he's going to go. And at first he had some destinations that he would have liked to have gone to, um, particularly in California. Yeah. We could probably rule out Sacramento. Yeah. And I would talk to different people and I'd be like, wait, he thinks he's going to be able to call his shots while having four years left on the deal and too. Being, and not and, taking a shot in the playoffs. Yeah, and layup. sucking at basketball, yeah. I think, is probably another yeah. big big factor that goes into that. Yeah. Right. Just be like, imagine it's the fourth quarter. He's <laughs> like, I don't want to go outside. Do you think that he's, he's the best player in the world if there was no hoop in basketball? He'd be unbelievable. First team. Yeah. He really would Yeah, be. first team. Uh, yeah, it, it's just... I don't know what's going on in his head. He's afraid of baskets. So you have to do some sort of immersion therapy where you just put baskets all around his apartment or his house. And just every time he looks at one, you give him a treat. Yeah, his door he- is a basket. So he has to walk in and out of it every day. 
But it has to be the shot clocks have to be simultaneously linked to start at three seconds. <laughs> so every time he doesn't have time to think. Right. That, I'll tell you, there's there's one shot from Ben Simmons. It's a couple years ago where I remember it specifically because of just how smooth it looked. It was the end of the shot clock. He had no choice. He had to get the shot up, and he did like a turnaround baseline jumper, and it went in, and it was it was terrific, and it was because he wasn't thinking about any of this stuff, and unfortunately. You know, this is this is true for anybody. I mean, this is why I don't like when people say, oh, well, you know, the studies say that there's no such thing as clutch. I'm like, okay, but if there's no such thing as clutch, do we agree that some guys lining up a certain putt start to feel a little different yeah. or free throw starts to feel a little different or certain guys are comfortable in tight spots and other guys aren't? So if that exists, then I believe clutch exists. And for Ben Simmons, it can be a really hard thing to dig yourself out of. Um, and clearly it's going to start somewhere else. I don't think he cares about where he goes now. It might be a bit like the Favre thing where Favre wanted to go to Minnesota so bad he went to the Jets first. And Simmons may be like, look, I'll do anything. Like, just throw me anywhere and then they'll figure it out on the next step. Uh, Because he just needs to start feeling comfortable out on a basketball court again. So I am sympathetic to some of it because it was really weird to watch somebody completely fall apart mentally in the playoffs like that. Like, this guy won't go – he will not go near the rim or even attempt at the rim because he's so petrified of getting fouled and having to shoot free throws. He just is over it. He's not going to do any of this stuff anymore. But then again, it's like, all right, yeah, but you had – you know, you signed a max deal for four years. It's not all on Philadelphia that you never developed as part of your game. And, you know, spare us the Instagram workout videos where it's like, oh, here you are again. L.A. Fitness pulled up. You hit a three at lunch. Awesome. <laughs> that was what about three. do you know anything about the metaverse? What if you put them in some of those Oculus glasses? I don't know anything about yeah. it. That ad, is that supposed to get me pumped with those kids in the museum? I think so. What's that supposed to do? I think it's supposed to change the world. That's that's as much as I know about it. Billy talks about it all the that's, time. I don't understand it, but I do think that you can. That's a tall task. You, you can put like Oculus glasses on him and then just run programs of him seeing all of his shots go in. If he had to do that for like you know twelve hours at a time for a week, I'm sure just seeing enough of your shots going in would give you a little bit of confidence. This feels like clockwork orange therapy that yeah. all PFT is bringing up here. Mm-hmm. That's true. You want to just you want to haze him into becoming a shooter. Yeah. No, but all this. All I want him to do. Yeah. Right. All I want him to be is a is a five like a stretch five sort of point guard. I want no big because that's the other thing that sucks about the whole matchup and why Sixers fans are wrong about this forever. And the reason they were wrong is that they'd be rooting against their current roster. But even at the best version of Philadelphia, the ideal version was to never have these two guys playing with each right. other. Like it's it's actually the worst combination of hey and anybody that disputes this, I'm going to explain it to you really quickly. Joel's the best post offensive player probably in the game today. Other than Singoon, maybe. Frank Kaminsky. All another f- worthy adversary. Um like, hey, what pairs well with that? Oh, a huge point guard that can't shoot and will never shoot. Right. <laughs> yeah, definitely that. Definitely that. Like, okay, who's Ben Simmons? All right, well, what would be the best thing for him? Ball in his hands all the time, wide open floor, surrounded by shooters, nobody in the way. All right, well, let's stick the best post. Like it just he, anybody that argued against it, even even if the Toronto series and all the shit, like, hey, could it have possibly worked out? Could they back their way into a final or something like that? Yeah, sure, fine. Over time, I just want to see Ben Simmons playing in a system now where he at least just feels comfortable. Because however mad you may be at him. You know, I don't want his entire career uh, derailed from this, and that's kind of where we're at right he, now. Sorry, Big he Tech. needs like the Dwight Howard magic. He needs to just be shooters everywhere, and let him be in the post because he's not going to do. You're right; he's never going to shoot. So he needs he needs he needs full space in the in the paint, no other big man, and shooters everywhere. And I actually think he needs Draymond. He needs a Draymond approach, but he doesn't have Draymond's personality, no. and that's always the mistake with him. Well, very he few is people a, do. I mean, Draymond's like right. one of one kind of guy. When, tougher roommate, Kyrie or Draymond? Beach House. Oh, Beach, Ky- Beach House, Draymond. Oh, I think Kyrie. I think Draymond. Draymond seems like like you just he'd get the best out of everyone. It would be tough for a little bit, but then you just be like hit hit a spot where you're just having the best parties. I would. Everyone's say, getting along. I think Draymond would be an awesome Beach House roommate in your early twenties. Kyrie, great Beach House roommate in your late twenties. When you want to chill out a little bit, he's always got the mushrooms. I think Kyrie could throw a banger though at like four in the morning, right in your face, and he's like, "What's going on?" Yeah, he just doesn't live by the by the right. normal time. Right. He's like constructs. Yeah, yeah hours are hours, right. man. Also, Draymond, you know who the alpha dog is. <laughs> like, it's good to have one guy kind of in charge at a beach house, right? 
he would be the guy. It's not an easy answer because, you know, with Draymond, if you were like, hey, I want pizza tonight, you'd be like, I told you we're getting fucking wings. Right. And it would be like, and there, he wouldn't think there'd be any more discussion. And you'd be like, come on, dude. Can't we get pizza once? And I don't think Draymond's ever going to give in. Where Kyrie would be like, I want you to make a decision that makes you feel better about all of your decisions. <laughs> so you'd be like, hey, that's super easy. Yeah. But then but then Kyrie, it might be nude week. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, or vegan week. Like, yeah. Right. Right. And you're like, wait, you know, that's my mom's couch. Like, she let us have it for the summer. Can you throw some drawers on? And Kyrie would be like, I, you know, why would your mother want to constrict anything about my life? <laughs> I, I could see Draymond also just wanting to set up fireworks every night. You yeah. know, he does, it, he does it for the first time on the 4th, and everybody's like, this is awesome. What a, that was legendary. Draymond went out and got $2,000 worth of fireworks. Awesome. And then it's July you know 5th, what? and he's like, I got $5,000 tonight. Because if, if it's in your 20s, you want Draymond because people would be like, you can't mess with those guys in that house. Right. That's also true. That, Draymond's a better little roommate. edge. Um, all right. We've gone this long. I do. This is obviously biased, but I do think the Bulls 35 games in are the best story in the NBA just because no one thought they were going to be the one seed right now. And they're playing great basketball. Is there. What's the ceiling? Maybe in Eastern Conference Finals. I love watching him play. I love the story. I was wrong about him. Um, and I, I I think to this point, clearly I've been wrong about the DeRozan contract. We'll see, you know, when you give an $85 million to a guy who's 32, where there were a lot of stats that told you, like, yeah, he puts up some numbers, but what is he really? And now he's incredible. Um, it's weird. I looked at some 538 database they have. They have this metric where basically they kept track of everything since the merger. So we're looking at 3,527 players that they've tracked with this metric. There's only five players that hit their career peak at a later age in their career than what DeRosa just did. Ironically, Lowry's the other one this year, um, which speaks to kind of my frustration with Toronto and people revisiting um, what that team was that kept losing the playoffs all the time because DeRosa wasn't very good. He wasn't. Right. And, you know, it was, it, they didn't trade him because he wasn't good. They traded him because they got a chance to get Kawhi Leonard, and it completely worked out. And then Kawhi used to have these numbers that looked good. And he started getting more assists in the Spurs system. And then there were some weird plus-minus numbers, guys, where you would you would put it together collectively and be like, wait, so you're telling me in the aggregate they're better with this guy in the bench all the time? So I remember I was going to vote for him for something, and then, you know, I was talking to some other people. And again, I don't have, like, a real vote that matters, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. But I was like, God, that's such a weird thing, like – so just over the course of a couple seasons, the team's better when you're not on the floor. Like, that's fucking crazy, even though he's a really good scorer. We know that. Um, but what he did is he started changing into kind of a, instead of the long twos, he did shorter long twos. And I'd imagine with the shot chart, like he's never shot it this well. He was at 15%, 26 and 26% from three the previous three years. Now he's at like 37 or something with Chicago. I think it may have been cutting down on certain things he's doing. So the DeRozan story is incredible, but it is still a little unlikely. Yeah, um, no, it is. I go ahead. I, I, well, I, I, like the NBA is very hard to kind of wrap your head around sometimes because you you have to admit that the to win a title you need one of the top five guys, right? Like you just do it. it you can't you can't win a title. Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, it sucks. It sucks. It's like a it's like not having a quarterback week one. You're like, all right, we're gonna tackle guys for the next 17 weeks, but whatever. Right, and and so the Bulls don't have a top five guy in the league. But what it's probably even worse to your right, point, by the way. Right. So but ahead. what yeah. AK, uh, the GM, did is essentially say, "Listen, we're gonna try to change what people perceive the Chicago Bulls as right now. We're going to build around Zach Levine, which I think a lot of GMs would be like, that's crazy. He's clearly not like the best guy on a championship team. But every move he's made has helped Zach be better. You know, getting Vooch, which people didn't like, getting DeRozan, getting getting Lonzo, like all these moves." I don't know if they're – they're probably not a championship team. They probably won't ever be a championship team. But it's a lot of fun to watch them play, and people are now looking at the Bulls differently. And I think that's the only thing you can do instead of sitting around and waiting for the first pick in the draft and having that guy be the most incredible player in the league in five years and also want to stay. So I I love what they've done. I just think that it's, it's a fun team to watch, and I'm also realistic knowing that – the chances are they probably won't win a title with this team. It is a great point that is not given enough credit all the time. There's this obsession, and I remember when I was covering the Celtics and I would work on the Celtics TV station forever, 
And when I was younger, I was convinced, you know, the weird thing about being younger is you just haven't been around long enough to realize how wrong you're going to be so many times. Right? So when you're younger and you're in the business and I'm like, oh, that move's stupid and this doesn't mean a championship and whatever. And I remember Bob Ryan was like, who cares? He's like, how about just being better? How about instead of every deal being judged on, well, that's not going to win you a championship. How about just make the roster better? Be more competitive. I don't know. Win more games. And he just laid into me. And I love Bob Ryan. And it it kind of changed the way I thought. Because I was like, you know what? He's right. And sure. You know, we had a third of the lead tanking before the season even started. Because it was like stupid to even try and compete. And I get to like, hey, you had a run. Oklahoma City's in their tanking window. They're trying to put it together. You know. Hanky ended up losing his job because he was so unapologetic about it and so like vulgar in his process. And he just wasn't good at playing the game. But Chicago just looked at it and said, okay, who are we? You know, we we made some major investment in a Vooch. We like who we could be when we're healthy. But if we add Zoe, we add DeRozan, we keep him around Levine. So now Levine doesn't feel like he has to close out every game offensively, which forced him into some bad decisions. They pick off Caruso because the Lakers brass. I I think the story there was a Palinka. He wasn't really a Palinka guy, so they were okay moving on from him, which is a huge mistake because we've seen now what Caruso brings to your team. So I give the Bulls a ton of credit for just going, hey, all we want to do is just be better. Right. Because this this play-in game stuff, like this is ridiculous. So – Going into it, I didn't know if we'd be better. I'm still worried about how they match up with a Giannis or Durant in a playoff game because of the personnel. Not even having a Patrick Williams. Who knows? Maybe it'll be an option. Um, that's still asking a hell of a lot of a guy who's played very little basketball. I still worry about you know Vooch, even though I love who he is, this big who can shoot. Um, and the numbers aren't the same as they were in Atlanta because he has less opportunity. But you know, will he be a big that can get a little exposed maybe at times? And then what are your options? So there are certain matchup option things with players. But think about this. If this is where we're at in December and January of this season, based on where I was after they gave DeRozan $85 million, and I'm like, hey, I don't know if they're going to be any good. Like, I like a couple of their guys. They should probably be good enough to be in the play-in game. To now they're sitting there at the one seed, even if I like Brooklyn and I like Milwaukee better than them. Like, that's incredible. That in itself is a big accomplishment. And those accomplishments, those steps in the NBA are almost never given credit. Right. And so that's why I think everybody should feel great about this. And I don't want to come on being like, because there's another side of this too, where it's like, oh, you don't think they can win a title? I'm like, can you guys chill out? Yeah, no, the, 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 the <laughs> no, not a title yeah. part is just the realistic, right. like I said, you if you look at the history of the NBA, if you don't have a top five guy who is it? The Pistons? Pistons, like, I was going to say. That's the last team. And, and they just had some of the, you know, four of the best defenders in, right. the, in the NBA at the time. Right. Like, it's just, it's just the reality of it. And I understand the reality of it. And when you play in a series, usually the team with the best player in the series is going to win out. So, I know the Bulls are up against it. I just think that it's – it they, they deserve a ton of credit for changing what was – I mean, you you know, Ryan, you have a ton of people that you talk to in, in like, the league. Chicago was a place that everyone looked at and was like, that place is so dysfunctional, why would I ever go there? You have to change that somehow. And this has started the change. And it could happen. You can change that perception pretty quickly with a couple seasons that have winning basketball. Yeah, and when you looked at the DeRozan deal by itself, like it was a pick in the sign and trade to give him $85 million, and then it kind of turns into like, hey, who are you actually competing against? But, again, I don't know. You know, we can be unfair with that, too. Right. It's like, oh, so you know every single fucking transaction that didn't go down? Like, that's not that's not realistic. I know I don't. You know, I'm talking about maybe guys that, you know, have to be on the line with all of these people. I just think when you look at it and you started to watch him play, you go, you know what's cool about this is that Zoe trusts, you know, Lonzo's a, a deferential player. Right. right. As talented as he is, he's a, you know, I don't know if it's the younger brother or the dad, but they, they – they drained the alpha out of him. No, it's at some it, he's point. perfect for yeah. Zach Levine. But it's yeah. but, but it works yes. exactly. Yes. And so you've got Levine, who's probably you know the where his decision making was to where it is now is a massive improvement. Are there still going to be you know a couple times here or there? But I, I don't care because it used to be so bad. I was like I don't know how you close with him in your lineup. And he's you want to talk athleticism? I was talking about Westbrook. Levine has movements where you go, wait, what did he just do? Like, every, nine other guys are stopped and Levine's doing something where he's reacting in a way that the other nine guys haven't even processed. That's how special he is. So when I see them, I'm like, you know what's cool is there's no there's no pressure for the three. It's, 
hey, whoever we feel like we want to get going, we all trust each other enough. In a very short amount of time, you could see this, yep. guys, with this team. Where I was just a couple weeks in, I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, they're all cool deferring. And, you know, even though Zach probably is a guy that doesn't want to defer a lot based on his style of play, I got to imagine, like, he's looking at an L.A. guy and DeRozan and, you know, going, all right, you know, this is somebody I used to watch. And um, I know Zach's from a different part of the country, but you could just see it. You could see it play out that there's a, there's a real buy-in for a group that's together for a very short amount of time that doesn't happen that often. And I also think this has to happen, and it's why there's other younger teams that are struggling. But you need to get over yourself in the NBA at some point. You do. And I, I, the best example I can ever give you is that 2007-08 Celtics team. Is you'd already had Pierce getting his ass kicked. Garnett can't get out of the first round. Ray Allen's coming off an ankle injury, and they can't win any playoff games. And so they'd been through it enough, almost 10 years, where like individually it didn't happen for us. So I now need to be kind of over it in a, in a very unselfish way. And there are teams you can see right now, it's like, now these guys aren't, they're not over themselves yet. And I think Chicago has a little of that, where DeRozan's like, what do I have left to prove? Like, of course I can score. Let's start winning some games. And I think Levine's like, you know, it's not fun is scoring 40 and never winning games. And Lonzo's now been on, what, three teams in a very short amount of time. So I, I do think, and even Vooch too, you know, cool. I put up 20 and 12 and hit threes with Orlando and we're the, one of the worst teams in the East. I think you have a group of guys there personality-wise where I think it's playing out as if, hey, we already know what we're capable of, but we're kind of over it in a very good sense of the word, a team, right. which sounded like, you know, it sounded like a Disney movie there at the end. But I also true. think that the Bulls are well on their way to becoming the favorite team in the playoffs of all the dads out there. You know, you play the game. These guys play the game the right way. It's teamwork. It's not hero ball out there. It's or the the guy who um, might not be the biggest NBA fan in the world, but just hates the fact that there are superstars. That superstars exist. The Bulls are going to be a team that. Why do dads? What do what do dads hate the most? Dads hate superstars, yeah. right? They hate they hate traveling. Traveling carries actually. My dad was my dad. It took him a long time to be able to admit that Allen Iverson was good at basketball. They love they <laughs> love post moves. They don't like. You're a dad. Yeah, I know. I mean, you're yeah, a dad I love too. Post moves. Yeah, um, bounce pass, chess passes, chess passes, chess bounce passes specifically. But if Layup. a chess pass doesn't work, a bounce pass after is yeah. awesome. Uh -huh. Layups off the right foot, good picks. You know all that stuff. They love they love kids staying in school. Yeah, kids yep. staying in school. Oh, you want to talk opt outs real quick? The power dribble. <laughs> they like the power dribble. Um, two handed layups yeah, where their hands hit the backboard. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what they love with two hands? Catching flies. Yeah, you yeah. trap it. Oh, following your shot is number one, actually. And the funniest thing is, is following your shot in the NBA is like the dumbest thing you could yeah, do. Yeah, because you just le you you <laughs> get them to have transition on your face every single time. But it is it's every time, like I, I'll just be like, "Oh shit, he followed a shot well there." As they like run, yeah, the ball no, bounces it's, it's, over their head and it's yeah. rebounded by the guy who's standing where you. Larry Bird, be. Larry Bird, the book drive. He they were. It was like I think it was one of his first practices with the Celtics. So I might have the timeline wrong, but Bird takes a shot and follows it. Red Arbach's like, you don't follow your shot in this league, man. <laughs> hey, don't. Uh, <laughs> Warriors, are they going to win the title? Wait a minute, opt-outs? Oh, you want to do opt-outs? Nah, we, I, we all uh, agree I, on opt-outs. Do we? I think we do. We hate them. We think that kids that opt-out should be yeah, they arrested. Don't like, they, they're anti-football anti pussies is what I think we've said. <laughs> Herb Street had to do like six appearances yeah, yeah, on our show. He was here and he yeah. was like, I want, I thank no, you I guys for the opportunity to let me say that I love players. Yeah. Uh, to all the players out there, I love you. I, I, I heard your your take and I actually, it's, it's a good point. Like eventually there will be someone who opts out of a playoff game and that will be an interesting dilemma that we all face because that does feel yeah, like it means something right. and people will be mad about that. And you'll just have to deal with it. I appreciate you listening. I, uh, I it's kind of like the pregnancy thing, right? Where like when a guy leaves and misses a game to be with his wife, everybody in the media now will be like, "Ah, oh, I can that guy gets it." And I'm like, "Okay." I'm like, "All right, hey, he's gonna miss a playoff game. Nothing's more important." I'm like, "Okay, okay." If a guy opts out of the Super Bowl because his wife's pregnant, I want to know how that goes over. Probably not well because. Because I, I'll know what everyone would be forced to say. Right. 
Like people will feel like the safe zone here is to applaud this when, you know, and again, there are, of course, times where it's like, hey, something's complicated or something like that. Again, I, I get the whole point, but I think there's a line on a lot of these conversations that we have where we think we're all on the same page. And then I present scenarios, be like, okay, what about this though? Would you then be on a TV show going, yeah, starting quarterback, Mr. Super Bowl, wife's on kid number three? That's the right call. Right. Because family first. Right. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it would, it, it's a good point. It's going to be Greeny being like, you know what? Fuck, fuck his wife. Like, that's pussy shit. You need, <laughs> you need to get out there and play. It is, uh, yeah. That was pretty aggressive out of you. <laughs> no, Greeny's, yeah, Greeny's going to be like, like <laughs> I, got, I got two of those little shits running around. Fuck them. I would, it's, I, we're talking about a ring here. Uh, I, I do think uh, college football is the, just in a very like severe, severe transition period where – Everyone's just gonna have to suck it up for a couple of years till things normalize. <laughs> no, seriously, because I have friends who no, it's kind of yeah, funny. No, I have actually, friends yeah. who hate the NIL and like not hate it, but like they're like, oh man, now this school's gonna pay for this player. It's like, well, what do you think was happening before? You know what I mean? Like it was all happening. Now it's just we can actually see it and and kids can make money and not feel bad about themselves. So I just it's all in a in flux right now, and college sports are the one thing where it's like the fans hate change because it's all tradition and it's all old school and all this stuff you just have to suck it up because it will all normalize and we'll look back in 10 years and be like remember when we thought nil was going to ruin college football no it didn't it's fine remember when opt-outs were going to ruin college football no it didn't it's fine it's just right now people think the sky is falling yeah we are really predictable on this like i remember when candlestick park san francisco giants was the first one to change its name and be three com and you thought i don't know do you guys have an it guy to get on that um because then they started having anchors on sports center like freaking out about <laughs> it and they called it commercial stick park and it was like how can you change the name to something that isn't a park like how can it not be named after something cool and it's just a commercial it's just a naming rights thing and people were fucking pissed about it and then guess what it was the norm People actually spend a lot of time arguing about patches on NBA jerseys. Yeah. You probably don't even notice yeah. them anymore. All right? Think of the transfer rules. And I made this point in my podcast where I remember like being offended that Stefan Marbury was only going to be in school for a year. I'm like, who's this kid think he is? Right. You know, I was younger. I was like, I don't know, 14. And I'm going, who's Stefan Marbury think he is? You know, like, wh- who gives a shit? And then it got to the point where I didn't even want these guys to even have to become one and done. So we, in the moment, We'll have things changing around us where we freak out about it. Like, think about the transfer rule and the arguments about the transfer rule. Now, it feels like almost everybody's on the same page. It's like, wait, if coaches' salaries are going to quadruple in a decade, guess what? You can deal with some transfers. Yeah. You can deal with kids leaving and being eligible immediately. I love the the transfer rule because it's just whoever, whatever coach complains, they're essentially saying, I have to work harder, and it sucks. Yeah, and and so – even just a couple years removed from some of these things that we saw, thought were such a big deal, and I, I just feel like the NIL is another one of those things. Yeah, the only where one it's going to be normalized here in a very short amount only, of time. The only one I remember that that got actual pushback and it it didn't happen was when baseball tried to put Spider Man on all the bases. Do you remember that? I, I think do. it was when like Spider Man Two was. I'm coming actually out. working on a documentary <laughs> on the Spider Man. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you should well, let's shout out Bill Plaschke, by the way, because he's still mad about uh, stadiums changing. That was an all-time take when it, when the Staples changed to crypto. Oh yeah, and he was like, "How could that?" Yeah, he didn't like, it's like it. It was named after a fucking office supply company. What are we talking about? And by the way, office supply warehouses in general are are, are struggling right now. Good point. Are they? <laughs> Great point. Our right, Warriors. Warriors gonna win it all. No, no, no. We still had one more thing there, though. I felt like opt-outs. PFT. You have we thing just... on opt-outs? I don't have anything else on opt-outs. I I have a hypothetical though. If you want to talk about it. Oh. Okay, yes. the Curry brothers against the Jokic brothers. So they get three. The Jokic's get three, but the Currys get two. Who wins in a basketball game? <laughs> Okay, so I told you, I talked to one of the guys of the Nuggets staff that said the Jokic brothers got thrown out of the staff pickup game <laughs> because it was so vicious. Yeah. All right? So I think I'd actually go with the Jokic's because there's three of them. And, you know, Jokic, the one we know about, the shit he does on a nightly basis to carry this team around him. Um, and there are some stats that tell you, like, he's the runaway MVP. I don't think it's fair to say runaway in comparison to, you know, some of the stuff. 
tough, although Golden State's fallen off a little bit offensively the last few weeks. Um, what Jokic does to carry that team and the way he plays, and it's just funny too because he gets taken in the second round and they're like, well, what was your deal? He's like, man, those first few practices, I was so out of shape. He's like, I used to drink three liters of soda every day. <laughs> So I don't know if GM should find like really skilled guys that have the worst diet, yeah. right? <laughs> like, can we find anybody with a horrible diet that's completely out of shape that actually is just a really good passer though and good hands? Like, that's that's what we should be focusing on. So I'd love to pick the Currys because uh, the shooting and, and stretching the floor, but defensively and the fact that one of the other Jokic brothers would probably kill someone right. to to get to eleven. From what I've heard from guys that played in pickup games with them, again that they were banned from, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the uh, the guys from the Eastern okay, Bloc. But full court, you go with the Currys. <laughs> Do you know I went to go play the other day and two guys were playing full court one on one. I love it. That's so cool. And I had to wait. That's awesome. <laughs> Good. You should wait. Just trying to get some cardio in. Were there any fat? Was one of them just like fast breaking? No. They were in good shape, man. They they yeah, went because they do crazy, that all but, uh, day. That's such a funny thing to no, do at, at like a local gym. Yeah, <laughs> just take up the entire. But waiting, and then guys guys are like waiting. Like you guys should do it and see how long you should run a video of it. You guys play full court someplace in the city, and then when a couple guys show up, be like, "What's the plan?" And then your video guy, or, and then maybe Hank goes, or maybe Billy, and says, "Yeah, they've they've got the yeah. court." And then they'd be like, "Okay, well, this is ridiculous." And they'd be like, "Well, look." you know, game point. Yeah. And they'd be like, what are you playing to? And Billy says 101. You want next? <laughs> and yeah. Then, <laughs> and then you're going to lay up. You're like, all right, 12-6. <laughs> um, all right, so wait. Warriors, yeah. yeah. Are they Warriors, win the title? Um, I mean, they're awesome. They're, they're, they're awesome, and they have Clay. I can't believe they're yeah, this good. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, to be this good without Clay, and part of it is that like five guys all of a sudden got way better. Um, this is the best Wiggins has ever played. The depth around them, the development from where a couple guys were last year, although Poole was really good last year too, statistically. Uh, this is scary. And so I'd love to see something out of Wiseman just to give him some kind of size that can hang with Aiton because if they don't have any size other than Looney and then Draymond having to play a small center. Although, you know, look, Aiton can have his nights. He can also have some nights where – and I like I like Aiton a lot. I just think that you wish it were just always like superstar level from him to take that next step. I don't think that's ever going to happen. And even if Aiton has a physical advantage over somebody, it's just not the way the game is played anymore, even with Chris Paul getting him the ball. You know, it's not like Aiton's going to destroy you for 30 on the block the whole time. The game's just not played that way. So sometimes when I look at like size, advantage, disadvantages, I have to remind myself like, okay, I can – I can think this guy has a huge advantage because of their front line, but is that really how the game is going to be played? Probably not. So the Golden State part of this with Clay coming back, because there's just this absolute sellout now defense against Steph that, you know, we've always seen blitzing where two stay with the ball off of whatever. They're coming all the way out now to do it to Steph. And sometimes it's throwing it to Draymond for a four on three, which is terrific. Iguodala is a valve as well, but now that Clay is going to be an option off of you selling out against Steph, good luck yeah, with that. Yeah, it's a good so. point because it is. I went to the game at, when they played the the Knicks. He broke the record. It was cr like the defense they were playing against him. It it was crazy. It was like they had two guys yeah. out there. I you don't see that. They just never let him shoot, and he still had like twenty five. No, it's there are certain nights and certain possessions where you're just kind of laughing, being like, "Hey, double team at half court." Yeah. <laughs> And and there's there's some more of that. You know, I, I even saw it with Ja Morant, who's been on an absolute tear now since he's been back since the injury. And that guy's awesome. I love watching Memphis. A lot of fun. So check him out. Shout out Grizz. But, uh, you know, all right, go ahead. You want to sell out and stop Steph and get the ball out of his hands. I mean, they have this record with these defensive statistics, with this improvement around him. Like, I thought, you know, they'd ride it and then kind of be in that five to six mitt and then Clay would come back and then we'd see what we have. But uh, this is scary. This is scary. Although as good as they've been, I still don't think this is the kind of team where Wiggins or Draymond are your second best player. That that's the that would be the model of a team that wins an NBA title, I wouldn't right. think. Um, I, I think I've even talked myself into kind of liking Phoenix better than them. Liking Phoenix better than them without Clay, But, you know, they beat him again. So, uh, you know, with Clay back... It's hard. It's hard for me to find Utah. It'd be hard for me to pick out of those teams against Golden State if everybody's healthy in a series. All right. So give us your finals. Ooh. All right. Uh, I'll go Golden State, and 
I'm going to say Milwaukee again. And it's kind of a bet against the newness of Chicago, not loving Chicago's options defensively for the size of Middleton and Giannis, and that the Brooklyn thing, I don't really like picking against them because like they almost proved us all. They, they basically proved to us last year that if they'd been healthy for the playoffs, the three guys could play for eight games in the regular season and then win yep. a title. Like That's not something that's supposed to happen, but they're better. And then you add the Joe Harris part of it. Patty Mills has been huge for him. You know, if the Nets end up winning the East, I'm not going to sit here and tell him to be surprised, but I'll just pick Milwaukee again because, you know, maybe I wonder if the Nets thing, I mean, if I also said, hey, this thing could get really weird again with Kyrie and the fact that Harden still can't get in shape. You know, Harden was so bad the other night against Memphis. He's just not interested. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going what about on. about Ben him. Simmons maybe eating his way out of Philadelphia? Did, did James Harden give the blueprint? <laughs> I wonder, would you trade those two for each other? Harden for Simmons? If, no. if, I, if, I'm who, was, if I'm Philadelphia, yes. If you're the Nets, no. All right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think it's a no if you're yeah. the Nets. It's a yes if it's you're clearly, It's a yeah. huge yes. It's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's a godsend. Yes. Well, he thought he was getting them. I mean, that day was really weird when the trade went down because there were people that were like, no, it's done, and Ben's – you know, kick the tires on what it's going to be like for him in Houston. So I don't, you know, I don't know if everybody's going to be totally truthful about that story. Because again, I'm not saying that I know the truth 100%, but there were a lot of people that were in the league earlier that day that were like, oh, yeah, Philly got him. All right. And then it switched. So well, my last question, because we've taken a long time for you. So we're going to see you in LA. We're going to do a podcast with Titus and you again. So everyone check it out. Nah, fuck that fuck guy. Fuck that guy. I agree. Not on Titus. I agree. Um, my last question, because I know we, we've already taken an hour of your time. Uh, Georgia, Alabama, Monday night. Who's your pick? And how yes. much How much would a healthy LSU team beat both these teams? Because they got the – Can you believe how – look at the recruiting, Ryan. They got the dudes. <laughs> um, were you trying to make fun of me yeah, last night about yeah, LSU? You didn't – And then did you think I took it way too I don't know seriously it was and a, like came back at your heart? It was just a communication error. The LSU was playing against Kansas State in their bowl game. They had – all their quarterbacks have been either injured or transferred, so they were starting a wide receiver. And I was making fun of, you know, being like, I thought LSU recruited well. How Like, this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, I, I picked up on the joke, but I was like, I just want to make sure we're still yes, joking here. Yes, we were joking. Um, yeah, man, I mean, LSU, the amount of the amount of talent they've had walk out the door in the last 12 months is, uh, crazy. is, impressive, is impressive and also a massive yes, problem. Yes, yes. So hey, what are you guys? Where are you guys at now? Are you done with Baton no, Rouge? No, I mean I, I, I love Brian Kelly. I think he's a he's just as funny as Coach O. No, you, the deal was you guys were off the LSU no, train when O it, left, and I could have my team gonna, back. Everybody thinks you guys are the no, LSU I, I, guys. No, actually, Joey Molinero. I, I've lo I've loved LSU. Obviously, I didn't <laughs> go to a big state school. I went to JMU, so we don't have like you know. Now we're going to the Sun Belt, which is nice. But that's my deal. That's my Vermont deal. I'm allowed to pick. Yeah, a different and so team. so all my best friends. Every went to then. LSU. I would go down there every spring break, and so I, I did. I wait a yeah, minute. Oh, That's not. Is oh, that yeah, true? Yeah. For some reason, they just all decided to go to Baton they Rouge. Can't. I don't know if all, well, but a few. I know a few th of them. Three, yes, three of my best friends went there. So um, I started to like LSU. But where are they? But I, your, I can't. Where are they in your best friend uh, ranking? I mean, one came to us with to the national championship, so I, he's not lying. Yeah, I'd say okay, I'd say two right. of them are in my top five. But I'm not saying that. That's actually I'm not pretty a diehard good. LSU right. fan, but I do like that school, and I always have. I loved it when Coach O was there. There's a big part of me that's rooting for it to completely fall apart with Brian Kelly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm easy. I'm, I'm, I'm out now. The nose out. I love going to Baton Rouge. I'll go to a game, but yeah, it was a Coach O deal. I love, I've loved Coach O for before that with LSU or uh, USC when he was winning interim games. Oh man, no, but it, no, it, no, the whole thing was. He's got the greatest record of all time as an interim head coach. So uh, we would just win money when he would be an interim. When USC had him coaching, they went like six and one to finish that season. So I, I yeah, I'm out. I, I I can't. Brian Kelly's a different dude. I I still love the people of Louisiana, but Brian Kelly is hard to root. I wanted to keep getting worse with Brian Kelly. Yeah, it's, I, it's I, I want the introductory for. basketball game thing. I want that to just be the tip of the iceberg for yeah. Brian Kelly. Hey, by the way, all the heat he took during that basketball game last night and the win against Kentucky, or excuse me, on Wednesday, or the game was Tuesday. Um, 
Don't you think he was making fun of himself though by saying Boston people? Yeah, don't yeah, he was yeah. joking. Accent, yeah, it was a it, joke. People, he was joking. Why does everybody think that he was serious? Cancel culture, that? Ryan. The yeah. internet is just so quick. Yeah, to jump it is. Aaron Rodgers is right. I'll agree with him on one thing. Yep. Um, no, he Brian <laughs> Kelly is. Yeah, he's not a he's not a likable guy. No. He wasn't a likable guy at Notre Dame. Like he's just he's not one of those guys. Like even Saban, uh, you know, I I do have a like. Saban, it's crazy to me that he's just not even bored at this point because it's just so so nuts. Like I, I likened it to if you're playing it on Xbox, eventually you up the level because you're like, this isn't fun. I keep winning every year. It's not even fun anymore. But Saban, it'd be like wait, it, it'd be like Peter North going out on a Thursday. Be like, you want to go out and talk yeah, to the girls? Yeah, right, right. It's like too easy, right? The uh, Sa- <laughs> like wait, Saban what? still has like I like Saban. He's not an unlikable guy. Brian Kelly's just. Not like hey, Saban's really yeah. like. By the way, Saban is really unless you're his offensive coordinator. Saban is a really likable right. guy. Uh, you know, I don't know much time you guys have spent Zero. with him. Um, every time I spend time with him, now again, he wasn't going to be an asshole to me for ten minutes. Be like, hey, this is a good idea. Have 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 this guy with a microphone in front of his face fifteen hours a week. Be, be, think I'm a jerk, but I don't know. I've always the Saban thing. You know, it was one of the points that I was kind of talking about with the playoff in general because we have these blowout games, which the point differential, I think, since the playoff was started is 17 points on average, the point differential in these playoff games. I mean, that's ridiculous. There's been three good games. It's way There's been beyond. three good games in 10 years. <laughs> there, no, seriously. There's been three good games. You know what we really need? We need so, Alabama's quarterback to have his girlfriend in the hospital giving birth on the night of the national championship game, miss a game, and then see how Sabin reacts to that. I would love to see that. That would be good. That would be the ultimate. You know what? Be, you know what would be funny is if a guy says, "I have a problem with him opting out because of a child's birth," but the NIL plays <laughs> yes, a part. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh so, yeah. Who's your pick? I'm doing it. I'm going to do it and make a huge mistake. I'm picking Georgia Same. in the rematch. I hate it. Same. The only thing that keeps going in my head, though, I think Georgia's better. I just think that that Kirby Smart. Like, there will be a moment. Stetson isn't better. Stetson isn't better. No. Okay, yeah, yeah. finish your yeah, Kirby yeah. thought. No, this Stetson's is, not even on yeah, the same go ahead. page. As, yeah, yeah, right. Like, that's not – obviously, it's not quarterback. But, like, defensively and just more consistently, they have been better all year. Alabama has had a great last few weeks. If you watched every Alabama game, they did not look great every week. You know what I mean? Like, they struggled against teams – they struggled against LSU. They struggled against Florida, against uh, Auburn. Like, weird games. I just think Kirby, at some point, like, the thing that scares me about my pick, and I've already bet it, I'm taking Georgia, but I, I'm i scared that Kirby's going to be like, uh-oh, like, what do I do here? Like, it's happening again. Because it does feel like Alabama just has that mental edge over them. You and I talked about this for, what, weeks leading up to the eventual Georgia game that we knew was going to yep. happen. And, you know, it's a huge number. Bama's getting six and a half, seven. And then when you're like, oh, so when ba- when Bama gets this many points under Saban, they've never lost. <laughs> you're like, okay, that's scary. But I couldn't help myself of being like, man, Bama just can't really block right. this year. I'm like, all right, so that front seven's all NFL guys. They're going to block them. They got the ball out quick. I talked to Cloud on my podcast this week. He made a great point. He said, you know, what's funny is that Bryce had more trouble against Cincinnati because there was things that were confusing where Georgia is so easy to him because Georgia is basically mimicking what they're doing at Bama. Now, again, I'm sure somebody could get into the intricacies of it and saying, well, Georgia and Bama differentiate themselves this way or all these. But, like, you know, personnel-wise, kind of the standard, what you're trying to take away and all this kind of different stuff. But, you know, with no Mechie, we didn't see it against Cincinnati because physically it was just two different groups there. But no Mechie is a huge deal because as great as Jamison Williams is, the depth for the receivers for Bama, you know, unless we have one of these weird bowl things where all of a sudden, you know, some random guy, like, shows up, like Ohio State. You're like, wait, Marvin Harrison's kid out there and he's nasty, yeah. uh, you know, which you didn't even see him because the other two first rounders didn't play. Um, I, I'm I'm with you and I'm scared to death that I'm I'm falling for it again. And I think you're right, because I think every Georgia fan looks at Kirby and goes, are we going to have that moment where you just can't hang with the guy across the sideline yeah. from you? All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I have one last last thing to ask you about your girl. Elizabeth Holmes, unfortunately, was yesterday found guilty on several counts. Yes. Have you have you inquired as to what the conjugal visit laws are? Are you going to be paying her? Or are you going to stop by and say hi to her? People don't know that you guys dated. I know. I don't really like talking about it. <laughs> but I knew her way. I mean, 
Yeah, before you know. her voice changed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, what are what are your thoughts on the Theranos tribe? Look, I can separate the two. If you guys know me long enough, I've done this a long time, and I think I look. I'm I pride myself on like, hey, I can feel this way about somebody, mm-hmm. but this is who I think they are in their profession. I think I'm the best at it. Maybe yeah, in the country. separate the art from the artist. Except I, I'm kind of the yeah. other way around. I think she sucks, but I think her inventions were good. I think we just need we need to really dig into those black boxes, and I'm sure that there's some gold in there somewhere. He her invention cool is the same as me drawing a DeLorean. Yeah, but you annoying. admit that if there was a I machine no. that could take one drop of blood and then diagnose everything that's yes. wrong with you, that would be a good thing. I'll put it this way. I'm always going to care about her, <laughs> but she made a huge mistake. <laughs> uh, anything for Billy real quick before we go? Billy's going to stay at your house in L.A. for Super Bowl week. A lot of people chiming in about vacancy over here during that week. I, I got to tell you, I don't know that this, we're going to be. We might be just might be a soft uh, opening. It'd be a soft opening. The best kind of we do have a night. Uh, we have a night um, set up for the close friends and family private event away from all the the glitz and glamour. And we may we may even start it with a couple beach sunset reefs, oh. and then then have have us walk up the path back to the so we're gonna have a little pre thing and then the real beautiful thing. cool we're in unless the unless the hornets are yeah on. then we got to watch them one of your favorite watches you do billy? watch the games billy looks like he has something on his mind can we right. can we yeah, just billy can we get just in park there. at your house though <laughs> <laughs> because no we have to park somewhere i'm, I'm going on this trip you, so. it's a rental car you're gonna drive your no, actual no, 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 car it's not, it's not oh yeah that's right so we're gonna have to park it somewhere but do you, how many, do you have spots you drive and cross so, country. Yes, so we did yeah. a, a year long competition of the six of us. Uh, the loser, uh, so it's four picks a week. NFL underdog favorite over under. The loser, and this is the diabolical part, thanks to Henry Lockwood. The loser and the second place guy have to drive across the country to go to L.A. So second place loses as well. So it's 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 chaos. Like we're coming down to it. And everyone's still so alive. third is in third the clear. clear. First in the clear, it's, fourth, five, fifth. It, it looks like it's going to be Billy in last place, and then second place is most likely going to be myself or Hank or Jake or me. Like it's it's chaos. Everyone's still of alive in week eighteen for That's everything. Great. So all right, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just say okay. yes. Perfect. You can yeah. park on your lawn. Beautiful. If you yeah, that'd be good luck. <laughs> we don't have we don't have many lawns over here. <laughs> what about basements? Town, Do you have basements? But, uh, I got like a half. A lot of basements. It's hard to even get a basement out here either. Billy, so, like we're going to uh, stay at a totally different part of L.A. And Billy's going to be like, well, we got free parking at Rosillo's in Manhattan Beach. It's like, well, da- yeah, that's actually going to be a huge mistake to park here. Where are you I guys staying? Know. It'll probably be like a hundred dollar Uber to just get his car every day when you could have just valeted it for 20 bucks. But he, you've agreed we're parking at your house. If he needs to park there, he can park there. Just making plans. Way to go, Billy. No, we got a parking spot now. I would do anything. I'd do anything for go. Billy. Thanks, bro. Come on. I can't. I can't. Well. Yeah. How's everything else going? How, how, are, the, how are the bench numbers? Let's get out oh, of the we're way. We're working on it. We're, you know, Bad. getting it together it's in bad. January. Billy thinks the vaccine sucked all the strength out of him. <laughs> Who knows? Years from now? What are your thoughts on it? Maybe we'll find I know a study. he actually does, though. <laughs> He's he, like. I haven't noticed this. I haven't post vaccine. I haven't noticed a significant, a significant difference, but uh, we're all different. We all have different, you know, DNA. Chaos, we're about to dude. actually work out right now. Billy hit me up yesterday and was like, "Hey, you want to work out after Rosillo?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Bring juice." So I'm bringing my juice to this. By the way, what what, what are you what are you guys eating online there? I've noticed just a bunch yeah, of pills. Yeah, Billy's got what, some. What pills. are you guys doing? We're on the subs. And Hank's got problems now. You're not feeling well, Hank. No, I'm good. I'm B- good. Billy's just giving us a random uh, cocktail of pills that we're all taking that's probably going to end us all. It's probiotics. And other things. It does take like 15 minutes to take them all. It's turmeric. There's turmeric in there. Turmeric? It's three, three sets of three. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> They're big. Dude, you guys don't need to be taking turmeric at this, or at least Billy well, doesn't. Just, like you're doing it for your joints and everything? Prep. You're too, it's prep. you don't, yeah. Oh, so you're getting in front of the exactly. joint pain by taking turmeric at such right, an early exactly. age. Every day I wonder, okay. like, could Billy kill me with these pills? And I realize the answer is yes. 
but I still take them. <laughs> Because maybe, maybe, maybe it'll work. Yeah, maybe it'll work. I noticed the fish oil in there. That's always. I don't think anybody's anti fish oil. No, right? fish oil is good. I, I mean, I used to give fish oil to my dog. Fish oil is, you know, as long as I've always frozen the pills so that way when you take it, you don't burp and you don't taste the fishiness. Ah, the fish oil burp yeah. is terrible. These are burp. I take. Th- Wait a minute. What are they? Burp uh, anti burp ones. No, seriously, they sell those ones. <laughs> The omega three. See, I'm concerned. Anti- I would rather have the ones that make me burp than the ones that they add stuff into. It's because they make have thicker burp. capsules, so they don't dissolve by the time you swallow them. But that sounds worse. Yeah. I think it's just a thicker gelatin. We're probably going to be dead by the time we get to Los Angeles. Yeah. So you <laughs> won't have jacked. to worry about it. Hey, yeah. you know what that means? I'll move up yes, in the rankings. Dude, dead or jacked? Yes, dead or jacked. All right, <laughs> Ryan. Thank you. Thank you for giving us an hour plus. Uh, we'll see you soon. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you. Okay, let's wrap up the show. We got uh, Firefest of the Week. Send everyone on their way. Week 18, next time we'll be talking. We'll be talking about playoff setups, playoff matchups, which is going to be very exciting on Sunday night. Um, Firefest of the Week. Hank, you start. You said, Hank said he had a huge one. Huge one. This was a pretty pretty big fire fest. It derailed my entire week, but it, it's also offered me some perspective, uh, a little bit of a some things moment, if you will. Um, you know, material things don't matter that much. But on obviously we were gone vacation. I was on vacation. Got back to the office on Sunday and Monday, and there was a bunch of boxes. Uh, there was a box from Roback. They sent me like a bunch of new stuff. Duvin, which is one of my favorite clothing companies, they sent me a box of goodies. Uh, there was a couple jumpsuits that we had got sent that big hat. You gave me one. Uh, and I think something else like a nice hat. And I took this big on Tuesday afternoon. I took this big tote bag. I, I put everything in there, got on the train. And then on the train, I just zoned out. Like I, I take two trains to get home. And I think on one of the transfers, I just left the tote bag with like basically my entire wardrobe for the rest of the year, uh, on the train. Oh, no. And I was watching TV like seven hours later, and I just bolted up. It was just like, oh, my God. Oh, no. And then I looked around my house. I was like, yeah, no, no I fucking left just that a, on the train. A and, giant and, bag filled with clothes? Brand new clothes, like all wrapped. Nice. Oh, no. That's the worst. And usually, like, the thing, and you know, and again, this is where it's like some things, it's like whatever, it's just material items, doesn't matter. I have clothes already. I'll be fine. But usually we get stuff sent. And usually just stays on the desk or in the pile. If there's something I actually like, taking the effort, as you know, Big Cat, PFT, you guys are pile guys as well. If you take the effort to bring it home, like that's something you want. Yeah. It, it's also very funny to think that Hank just left a giant bag on the train and somebody probably called the cops later because they thought that there was a bomb on there. <laughs> no, I mean, it was all see like some, you open the bag, it was clearly Dude, like wrapped up stuff. You might see a homeless guy rocking some I awesome hope I do. swag. I hope I do. Getting some, getting his fits off yeah. on your subway route, dude. There was good stuff. There was, I mean, there was everything: sweatshirts, long sleeve, collared shirts. It was, it was. I took the best of the best, put it in a bag, brought it home. Was like, good. Don't have to shop for a year. So Hank doesn't have any clothes. If if you own a clothing company out there, <laughs> Hank is asking you humbly. No, I'm saying I learned. This was a learning experience, and it's like whatever. I don't need clothes. Just give me, give me whatever. But yeah, you're also missing out. Hank is dressed really nicely today. Let me see. Hank, show it off. He's looking adult as fuck. He's very adult right now. <laughs> this has got to be new clothes. Look look at this adult ass fit. Look at this. Is he wearing jeans? Shirt with a button. Yeah, that's just so for people who are listening right now, he's just wearing jeans and a shirt. No, it's a <laughs> nice shirt though. What is that? Like, yeah, it is. It's a like shirt. If, it's a if shirt. He's wearing a button down. It's a, bu- it's a flannel. He's wearing jeans and a flannel. It's not a f- is it that, a, well that that's a little uh, a life hack for all the kiddies out there. If you wear sweatpants ninety percent of the time, it, if you wear jeans and you come to work, people are like, Oh my god, you look great. Yeah. And if I don't wear a hat, people are like, Oh my god, you got dressed up today. Yeah. Set that bar low. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh all right, PFT, your fire fest. Uh, my fire fest is I had um I had a glass of wine last night pussy and yeah i know man card joe buck uh i i it was a pinot grigio it was a white wine i poured it i took a sip and it tasted awful i mean off it tasted like a rotten margarita like a margarita that's been left out for maybe three or four weeks and i was like oh this wine sucks it must have gone bad it must be corked i poured myself a different glass of white wine that sucked too 
COVID fucked up my taste bud. I can still taste and smell, but all alcohol tastes awful to me. Like real bad. Like there's a visceral reaction when I drink it where it tastes like it's rotten. Like I can't, I can't drink beer. I can't drink liquor. I can't drink wine. It's all fucked up. I don't know how long this is going to last. Mm, that Damn. does suck. Are you sure you didn't brush your teeth before? A million. I never brushed my teeth, Billy. You know that. No, I, I, did, I did not brush my teeth. Um, but I don't drink that much. I'll usually have like two beers on like Friday, maybe a couple beers on Saturday. But this, especially like this football season, I haven't been drinking much alcohol. But I, it's, it's just a weird sensation that I hope comes back because I do enjoy drinking the occasional beer, the occasional ice cold Coors Light. Um, so I don't know how long my, my taste buds are going to be fucked up for, but that's that's really the only lingering effect besides the brain fog and also now I'm 5'8". Uh, but besides that, I don't have anything else from COVID. But it's just it's a bizarre thing to have sticking around with you. That's weird because when I had it in February, I lost all taste, but it was like consistently all taste for two weeks straight. Yeah. Not like a little bit of taste or something tastes bad. It was... I made that video where I was licking my deodorant bar, and it was just nothing. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. I can, I can still taste every everything else tastes perfectly fine and normal, but for some reason the alcohol tastes. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Maybe I'll do sober January. Maybe it came back and it's just super hardcore. Maybe I can taste alcohol more. Yeah. Maybe I'm. Maybe yeah. I could be like a sommelier. This wine sucks. Be your wine snob now. This wine yeah. also sucks. Yeah. Um, all right, my fire fest is I got a new iPhone and I got the new iPhone Pro Max and it was too big and I guess I have small hands, which I didn't realize, which sucks. Haven't you've measured your hands though, right? They're like quarterback safe. Yeah, they're normal. They're normal size. You wouldn't. I wouldn't get a tweet from Ian Rapport being like, "Holy shit, Big Cat's hands! Don't draft them." But I don't know. I think it also is just an enormous, enormous phone. It's like it's very heavy. The Pro Max iPhone 13. Bubba has it, but Bubba has gigantic Free hands cans. um and but really it was like you know how most of your when you're on your phone the majority of it is like holding it and just using your thumb being able to get to the top and the bottom with your thumb mm -hmm. i couldn't do that so it was it was what it kind was of bad. coverage do you have with with a full swipe can you go like 70 percent uh wh like how far if oh you start i, I already returned bottom. it i already returned it i already returned it i had to return the oh, phone so you got that's a new big. phone that you have right now this is you a had new to get phone. The mini I had to return it because for your tiny yeah, hands. Well, it's this is the the regular size. The Pro Max. Also, when you take it out of your pocket, as everyone knows, I don't use a case. I'll never use a case. I almost dropped it like six times taking it out of my pocket because it's just it's heavy and it's got a lot to it. Uh, so yeah, it's it was a it was a wake up call. Wow. I mean, the the internet is Very saying sad. that you have tiny hands now. Yeah, that's true. I thought that your fire fest was going to be Djokovic, your your king is trapped in an airport in Australia, like the plot of, no, of the fine. Terminal 2. They, it's fucked fine. up what they did to him, I thought. They invited him. Yeah, of course And then is. they told him that you're not allowed to leave the airport. And <laughs> They don't want him to win. <laughs> they don't want to see him win. It's probably Roger Federer trying to keep him down because I mean, they know that he's going to break the His record. dad got involved. Did you see what his dad said? Yeah, he was pissed. His dad will fight All-time quote from Sir John Djokovic. Shame on them. The entire freedom-loving world should rise together with Serbia. They crucified Jesus, and now they're trying to crucify Novak the same way. <laughs> I'm, I mean, did Jesus ever win w Wimbledon? Did Jesus ever beat Roger Federer at He's a cross-court all-star. No, he did not. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Um, okay, uh, Jake. My fire fest tap on on the show. It was well-documented. I Why? What happened? Oh, so if you didn't listen to Wednesday's episode, um, which you didn't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got me, you got, got me, him. <laughs> um, got him. So Good one, you guys were talking about the Low Man Trophy. I was digging into the Wisconsin football game notes, looking for the pronunciation of John Chanel, and I did pronunciation. Not. Yes. Yeah. Of uh, you guys talking about the Kellen Mond incident, that was my hot seat. And Jake, I, I don't want to pile on, but it sounds like you just made an excuse. I mean, that's why. It's not an excuse. That's just the reasoning. It sounds, like you, difference. it sounds like you included it because it was an excuse. Not an excuse. I screwed up. You saw my apology on the notes app. 
It happens. Mm-hmm. You just move on. But that's my fire fest of the week. What would you say? T- I I I feel strongly that you will bounce back. Thank you. Jake. Mm-hmm. Thank I you. I do too. But yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not mad at you, Jake. I'm just yeah. disappointed. Fair. Billy. So uh, I woke up Wednesday morning. I was feeling great. My body's operating on the highest level because I'm <clears> supped up. <throat> Bounced out of bed. It was about like seven thirty. Got a couple rounds on the bag, boxing, about like 15 one-minute rounds. Ate breakfast, was feeling good, got everything ready, was about to head out the door. I hope Billy just keeps narrating his entire day like this. <laughs> and whatever happened to him happened at the end of the day. You yeah, know, keep going. Got everything going. It took one step off into my staircase going down into the street. Totally wiped out. Went totally vertical. Slipped. It was an icy staircase, went all the way down the stairs, hit my head, hit both funny bone, all the nerves in my elbows on the side of the same staircase, then slid all the way down the staircase to the sidewalk. And I sat like was on my back staring at the sky, just like both elbows buzzing. And (laughs) I had totally just slipped down, wiped out. It was terrible. Did anybody see you? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> what I tell you I though After I, I have a long standing theory That everyone gets one wipe out a year Everyone wipes out once during the winter months And it's better to almost get it out of the way Earlier because then you're a little bit More cautious because like When, when it gets cold and there's ice You you don't remember That like oh fuck I gotta start watching Where I walk and all these like hazards And everything so you fall once Hopefully it's not a bad fall. And then the rest of the winter, you are you got your uh, head on a swivel. Yeah, the one guy who saw me, Liam knows this guy. He's this dude who runs around the neighborhood yelling all the time, asking people for cigarettes and money for coffee. And he goes, are you okay? And I'm just like, yeah, man. I couldn't really talk at that point. Kind of winded. Did you give him money? I In that moment, he... I'm sorry, but like... Yeah, I, he elfed you. He, That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah. I, no, no, he didn't... I didn't give him money because I was like... I had to like gather myself because I, I was just You have to next I know, time. Next time he was looking out yeah, for you. He, Save your life. He's the only one that checked on you. I know, but then I had mm-hmm. to yeah, just I'm, I'm sorry it wasn't there. Yeah. Next time. No, it's fine. <laughs> but I I just really <laughs> wish that there was some sort of like surveillance footage that we could see of Billy there, falling there down. Might, there might cartoonishly be slipping and somewhere. falling and Yeah. Yeah, but it was uh that was the first I'm fucking old moment. Because You're not. well, I woke up the next morning and I was sore, and I was like, "What?" Because you fell on your ass down a whole flight of stairs. Yeah, but usually you bounce back from those. <laughs> anyway, 2022 just reminded me: body craves contact. There we go. So, Billy, I never want to hear you say I'm old again. Getting old, bro. No. Oh, you ever feel like maybe like you're just over the club scene? And you just want to have an IPA with your dog and just chill on the couch? That's that's a little too old. I don't think I've ever drank an IPA in my life. Yeah, because it gives you tits, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll stay away from that. Oh, the thought just uh, occurred to okay. me. Maybe maybe Billy's supplements fucked up my taste buds. Oh, also could, could be, be true. Uh, that's a definite possibility. Anything that goes wrong with my body, I just need to remind myself. I'm ingesting like 40 different chemicals that a 19-year-old gave me. I've been giving you antabuse. Mm-hmm. That's the drug that makes you puke whenever you touch alcohol. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's for your own health. Damn. <laughs> All right, let's do numbers. Send everyone on their way. Billy, Eight. hit it. 22. 8, 8, 6. 92, 12, 98, 86, 84, and 32 aren't in. 69. 44. Uh-oh. He's not plugged in. Billy thought he was just going to sit shot. in Big Cat's spot and take his job. It's not that easy. 8. Billy, you eating any meals in my desk? No, he's just sketching a woolly mammoth. <gasps> oh, we got a... F- is that going to go up? I swear to God. Oh, no. my God. What was that? Oh, it was that 99. was 99. 99. That was 98. That was going to fucking... Wow. That was not qualified. That was, was not qualified. Do it not, again. Got to do it again. 99 did not make it all the way up the chute. Got to do it again. Oh, Wisconsin football just posted uh, official thank you for the low man trophy. Oh, nice. The actual Twitter account. That's what awesome. do we have? 58. Second 58. timer. 58. 
58. 58. 58. All right. All right. We'll see everyone on uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. Also, the uh, Barstool Sports Bar will be open in Chicago on Saturday. So go check Where? it out. River North. River North. Hell yeah. <laughs> is, there a, is there like an intersection or just like go to River North until just you River see North. White Sox Dave? I don't know the exact address. I don't know the exact address. <laughs> you just Google it. Love you guys. Turkeys are only native to mainland United States.